Welcome back everybody to Queen's Club, the home of the 2012 World Championship and the second day's play. Steve Agona will be looking to try and turn around the match as, the, as Rob Fay leads by three sets to one in the best of 13 sets. The first person to win seven sets is going to be the world champion. It was an interesting night on Tuesday night. Steve Agona was leading 5-2 in the first set, but Rob Fay, as only he can do, turned the match around and once took the first set six games to five. Steve did well in the second set, coming back to level the match at one set all, but then from there on in it was only Rob, and uh, he leads a substantial lead, really 3-1, Steve's got his work cut out. So the question on everybody's lips is whether Rob Fay, nearly 44 years old, can once again retain the title for the 11th time, a record that's never been surpassed. This will be his 10th successful defence of the World Championship, the oldest World Championship in any sport going back to 1740. Since that time, the World Championship has only passed hands 24 times. Incredible. And here now by a uh, former world number one player, Lachlan Dukar. It's a long time since I've seen you, Lachlan, but it's great to join you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lachlan, uh, you saw the fir first night, and uh, how do you think it went? I think the, um, probably a fair result. And two people were playing, both of them would have been disappointed, really. Because I think if either of them had played at this point, they would have been, you know, been better off. I think Steve could have been through enough if he played well, and if he probably played well, he would have been 4-0 against the opposition. So, both disappointed, and I expect Rob to sort of, you know, oh well, didn't play great when through enough. Join me now for the on-court presentations of the 2012 World Championship. Testing okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Thank you. <coughs> Can I please introduce you to your MC this evening from Melbourne, Australia, Jonathan Howe.
Good evening, Ronnie. Put it on top of that one. Good evening, Jed. How are they? Good yeah. evening, Matty. Right. Ross. We've got to get these under there. Uh, Matty Ronaldson. And Jed Eden with uh, Ben Ronaldson uh, heading in shortly. Fortunately. And possibly a little bit of Jonathan Howe. Rob is looking rather white, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's got the right kit on as well. <laughs> More salt than pepper, they say, right? Indeed, indeed. But looking, uh, looking pretty fit for for that 44 years of age. Uh, no comment. And might we say the Queen's Court is looking splendid after its refurbishments? Yeah, it looks like time. looks like they cleaned it as well. You're going to get yourself in trouble here, Maddie. No, no, I just, you know, it looks very, very sharp. Well, we should probably talk about some proper stuff and uh, what our predictions are here. And uh, at the dinner last night, they tried to um, extract as much information from both players about what their tactics were. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it would be best to describe both of them as being evasive. Which is exactly what you'd expect, really, <laughs> I guess. Steve was a little more forthcoming, but uh, saying he was going to try some different things on serve. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? I, th I thought on, on the first day, um, his serve was working for him. Um, I, Rob, Rob commented to someone earlier today that he'd, uh, he'd only hit four or five cut volleys. So mm -hmm. uh, if you're taking that away from him, you, you're probably doing something right. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, I, I didn't. I was getting text updates on uh, day one, and I was just trying to figure out what I thought was going on based on the scoreline. Um, I was aware of the 5 2 first set for Steve. I was aware of the 6 3 second set for Steve. I was aware of Rob winning the third set 6 1. I was aware of Steve being 3 1 up in the uh, fourth and then losing 6 3. And I just had to surmise what I thought about that from that um, but I, I guess you were here so w what was your thoughts? I think it would be best described as a daylight pickpocket really, a very unsubtle one <laughs> uh, but you know he's, he's been he's shown that ability to do that over and over again and, and there, there are a lot of people here obviously from Melbourne um, supporting um, both players um, and um, a lot of them mentioned this certain parallels between the um, Melbourne World Championship between these two two years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, the the way that the sets panned out um, on Tuesday evening. Okay, yeah, I mean it, it's I mean it's interesting to see if there's going to be any difference tonight. But uh, trying to describe to everyone out there the difference between a, a British Open and a World Championship, not necessarily the the importance of it uh, as such, but the the way you play, you play four sets there isn't going to be a winner after day one so um, you're not trying to win the contest there it, it's, there's, a, there's a, a false feeling of what happens at the end of day one and day two you can turn things around and you probably still haven't finished it um, and unfortunately no one knows that like Rob uh, I think if you're 40 plus as well you're trying to win in two days <laughs> I can, I'm sure that's the case but uh Tough opponent to do that against, I guess. So, are you predicting a 4 0 to Rob? Or are you not at all, not at all. Um, you know, I think this has been such a stellar championship thus far that almost uh, it would be a shame if it uh, didn't go to Saturday. Um, I'm sure Rob would find things to do with himself uh, in the meantime, but uh, no, I think, let's be honest, Steve was, was having his way with him for two and a half sets. Although the set scores didn't go that way, that's effectively what was going on on Tuesday night. And, and speaking of stellar, I mean, is anyone going to the bar? Or well, Matty, you're very smart. You, you brought at least half a glass of champers. Well, I've got to get through the first five minutes. Can you push that over towards the middle here a little bit? I'm afraid it's. Uh, I've, I've, I've already tasted it, so it wouldn't be sanitary. So you asked my prediction. Mm -hmm. I, I think two all today. Two all. Yep, I think 5-3 um, going into the last day would be a, a sort of an accurate reflection, if you like, of, of what's happened um, today. But, I mean, there's a lot, for, a lot for Steve to do. A lot depends on that first set again. You can't, simply cannot afford to, to, to blow those leads. Well, this is it. I, I think it's, it's the first set um, is going to define so much. Uh, whether he's up and loses or whether he...
Um, oh, look, Rob can hit the grill. Well, that's pretty yeah. good. Um, whether Steve's up and loses again or whether Rob wins it, I think I think 4-1 is, is tough. 2-3 and suddenly who cares about the 3-1 yesterday? You're a set behind and you, you've got the legs on the guy and it, 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 the, the outcomes are so, so different. Very good point, very good point, yeah. And this is not to say that if Steve wins the first set, then suddenly he's favoured. It's not to say if Rob uh, wins the first set, then the game's over. But it, it, it's such a big first set here. And uh, whether that means there will be the same sort of nerves as there may or may not have been on uh, Tuesday or not, I'm not sure. As I say, I wasn't there to watch it. But um, this first set is going to be so very interesting. I think the point is almost not winning a set. It's what momentum you might be granted from when getting getting that first one on the belt early in the evening. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you know, Rob's three one up, he he's in a position where he can he can two all and two all it to victory. Um and yet if Steve can somehow get a three one here, suddenly it's all square and Steve's got the momentum. But where where's Steve right now, Matty? Um Oh, I can't see him. I can see Andrew Lyons. Um, I think it was a call of nature and uh, and a mock applause there. He walked right through the fake camp. If I'm not oh wrong, yeah. is the fake camp on the in the the hazard side or the on on the the service side galleries? The what? Sorry, is the fake camp on the um, hazard side galleries or the service side? Honestly, gallery? I'm not sure. I've just seen a, a really bright red sweater, which I know and Adam Phillips is wearing in Chase the Door. So I'd imagine. Uh, Steve's got the service side, but uh, Jed, tell me a little bit about the atmosphere. Um, I know um, there's a lot of electric, l a lot of loud support for both camps. I know um, they've got different supporting styles uh, amongst them, and I, I heard it was very interesting. I, like I said, I wasn't there, so tell me what you thought of that on day one. Well. Again, going back to last night's dinner um, where they interviewed both players, um, and they were forthcoming, they were, they were both great, um, and they both will have wanted to rest up for the day. Um, there was mention made of um, one of Steve's um, most uh, uh, avid supporters, um, Adam Phillips, uh, head pro at MCC Lords, and the various uh, nicknames that he had for him. Um, Ed Kemp, the MC, had wondered quite a lot quite a deal about the Stevie Wonder one, bearing in mind that uh, the famous musician is, is blind. But um, mm. look, no, I think, you know, I it's, it's always difficult to tell on a Tuesday. <laughs> uh, on a Thursday of a World Championship, um, th things become tighter. You know, the match is looking a little bit more like des uh, decided. So that's when you, I think if you're the player, you're hoping your supporters are uh, uh, backing you to the hilt and, and, and getting you into the match. Must be quite a... A, a weird sensation at the Queen's Club to have such loud support. I mean, it's it's often so correct and once again you're getting yourself into trouble there, Maddie, and uh, I'm not going to support you. No, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just I'm just sort of saying that it, historically in real tennis, you you know you, you have this bizarre atmosphere where you're so close to the game that the slightest mouse fart and and it's very audible and it's very difficult to. Uh, to concentrate on anything else but this small matter, but something about the World Championships and there's this free reign to, to shout and scream for your opponent and because it's so loud, suddenly the support becomes more of a white noise and, and it's okay. Yeah, I think throughout his career, Rob's done very well at being sort of blinkered to pretty much everything that's going on. I know, I know Steve uh, sometimes has... Um, uh, I want to say that um, when things are going well for him, he, he doesn't seem to notice things. But um, you know, look, I, I have sympathies for that feeling. When 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 you things aren't going well, you need to focus more, and uh, uh, and little distractions can 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 mean a lot. And uh, look, all the supporters I thought on Tuesday night were, were great. You know, they 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 weren't clapping errors and what have you, which um, sometimes you see, which is. But bottom line, ideal. bottom line is, if you invite a lot of Australians into one place, you're going to get noise, right? This is very true. It's not quite sort of the Division One National League home match that, that we might experience at Middlesex or something like that. I don't think anybody cares about that one, Manny. <laughs> well, still, you you know, you still want quiet there, don't you? I, I'm I'm rather curious about what's been going on. They both have both of them 
had toilet breaks here, and well, letting the other one pack this up a little bit more. I know that that we had um, a nice champagne reception. I mean, perhaps Steve and Rob had a few glasses, and uh, they've broken the seal. <laughs> That wasn't the silence because I was guffawing. Right, so uh, do we have they had a toss of the coin? Well, presumably they they finish where they start the uh, the previous day. Am I right in saying that? You'd hope so. When presumably so if Steve, it's, it's a continuous point. match which happens to have a two-day break. But if Steve ended the the, the the fourth set from the service, then I would assume he starts there. Sure. It's, it's good that I'm learning things here as well. Well, you're never too young. And it looks like it was Rob who finished from the service end as he's now coming down there. <coughs> so here we go, folks. Strap in. Hold on to your hats. I think the first serve will be very interesting. Uh, Rob served, to a degree of success, the, the high side wall. So just clipping the... the uh, the wall above the service penthouse, mm -hmm. um, but I got the feeling when he was doing it, he, he was never wasn't quite convinced of it. And there he is warming up a railroad, and that was the other one that he had success with. He he served them pretty much exclusively def to defend chases, the railroads, mm -hmm. and then um, towards the the fourth set, he was serving them more. Uh, I think he felt that he was tying up Steve sufficiently. There was enough wear on the balls to get them to come back into that that battery wall underneath the winning gallery. So here we go guys, Rob to serve. First set of the second day. Danny Jones gets to say something in the first couple of seconds. Sorry, folks. So Danny Jones is the uh, the referee in the in the dental. And the first point on Tuesday's match was Steve hitting one into the net. So I don't think that's ominous in any way. Just saying. Tamba winner there for Rob. Um, just trying to work out the body language of the guys. I, I, I was wondering how Steve would be. I was wondering how Rob would be. Fifteen thirty now. Now the other thing that was notable, um, possibly because of the the way that the Queen's Court is, that both players were using a boast off the main wall in towards that right hand is backhand corner uh, to set chases. Okay. So first game to Rob there. And that was how Steve got a lot of his chases as well, just annihilating it into that back wall. And uh, Rob would run out for a few of them, but uh, he'd also uh, give up without trying on a lot of them, knowing that... Uh well, it's interesting because um, Steve is well known for his desire to get down the service end, and normally he's a, a gallery hitter. Um, it doesn't sound like he was doing much of that on, uh, on day one. Well, he hit a few galleries. He also nearly hit the marker, Drew Lyons, who was um, thankful to still to be alive. Now, I, I've seen a couple of near misses before, but this was a near miss of all near misses. Uh, Drew knew nothing about it, and it um, clattered into the net tape. 30 loves Steve now, uh, in the second game with a chase. Double fault from Rob. Double fault from Rob there. 40, 50, 40 love Steve in a chase. That's going to be the first of his match, I think. Uh, Steve did two at very important times on Tuesday evening. 
uh, one to allow Rob back in three to three five in that first set. Uh, he sort of shrugged it off because he obviously didn't know what was coming. But uh, you do know, it was pivotal. Do we do we shrug off uh, Rob's there? I mean, he's the uh, greatest player in the modern era, and he's he's double faulted there. It's not Seven something you'd really expect. Up. Do we read into that? Case better than six. I think he probably just wanted to go out the receivers in. <laughs> Fair enough. Got there quicker. Now there it is. So Steve was foxing us all. He's doing, gone straight back to the same server as he was the other night. Oh, winning gallery. Winning gallery to take the game. One game all in the, uh, in the first set of the second day. Game server, one game all. Well, you'd have to say they both look confident. So Steve's, Steve's inviting either a, a shot into his forehand corner where you'd, you'd argue he's uh, the most likely winner or if Rob's going to go into his backhand he's got to go over the high part of the net. So it's, it's certainly an interesting serve and it looks like it's taking out the, uh, the very famous volley returner serve and main wall force that, that Rob's uh, dominated the game for for so many years. And I'll tell you, Matty, Rob was very disciplined about just going Last into gallery, that forehand corner of Steve's even knowing that um, should he get it a margin wrong that um, arguably the best forehand was was uh, hitting it towards the grill. Okay. I remember the, the final eliminator in Tuxedo some years ago. Last um, gallery, both chases. Yeah. Steve obviously felt, felt very comfortable on that court um, on the third day but uh, it seemed through the streaming that we saw that pretty much anything that went into his forehand corner, uh, albeit that it was the, the furthest target from him, he just he just siphoned everything into the uh, into the grill. Well, if Steve has a defining shot, it's the uh, service forehand corner grill shot. Uh, if Camden's listening, I'm sure he'll be upset Steve to hear that Steve is definitely the best in the world at that. Last uh, maybe not other things, but, uh, but certainly that shot there, so... It's something he practices a lot. It's, it's his source of his biggest confidence. So I'm sure he'll he'd love to do that as often as possible. Fifteen all, last gallery. So fifteen all now in the uh, third game and uh, second chase of last gallery. Rob talking to himself there, I think. Or somebody else. Oh dear, I'm talking to the referee. Now that's not really on actually. 15 all last gallery. There's certain something about the top couple of players in the world where they they uh, I don't like it frankly. They they feel as though they can have a chat to the uh, marker and uh, and help them with their decision making. If not on a single isolated occasions, but uh, in general. Uh, yeah, and 30, it's very it, it's it's a very difficult game to mark. It's a very difficult game to referee. There's there's a lot of things you're supposed to see, and um, invariably the best markers aren't aren't the uh, the top two or three players in the world. So they see it the way they see it as markers, and players see it the way they see it as players. It's uh, yeah. It's probably similar in all sports. I'm sure Howard Webb is, uh, was never a Premier League superstar, but he's one of the best uh, refs in the English Football League. But and look, look, Drew Lyons is the best marker in the world. You know, he's he's got the confidence of the players by and large, and uh, you know, he obviously gets an enough of the decisions right that uh, even the most uh, finicky of players uh, in, you know, see fit not to and contest him too much. Mm -hmm. So that's 40-15 Steve and one chase. So I'm going to hand over to Ben Ronaldson um, while I take a comfort break and uh, come back shortly afterwards and uh, maybe uh, have a little chat some more. Speak soon. I'll, I'll have a, leads, I'll have a beer. Thanks, man. Chase, half a yard, worse than six. Yeah, Maddie's going to need a few comfort breaks. He's drunk quite a lot already. Hello, Ben. Hey. I don't think I've seen you since about this time last year. You're difficult to extract from uh, from Dorset these days. Dorset. How's that lovely new daughter of yours? 
Okay. Sleeping. <laughs> Server leads two games to one. Right, 2-1 start to Steve then. And a lot of it because of his tactics, which we saw on Tuesday, and he's, he's kind of duplicating them now, but um, possibly putting them up slightly better. We saw a few of those, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think if his, uh, his support team were, were doing the right thing, they, they would have said to him, look, you know, all of it was working. Um, maybe you snatched at a few games that you... Um, you shouldn't have, but but pretty much, you know, you know, Rob alluded it to in the in the speeches again last night. He he felt that he was marching to to Steve's beat out there. Um, well, it's almost giving it away, Second really. Isn't it? I mean, what what we've just seen right there is, is exactly <laughs> the game plan for both of them. Uh, Steve's trying to encourage Rob to hit his forehand, and Rob saying, "Well, I will, but I'm going to hit it in the last gallery because I don't want to hit to your forehand." We're going to see this from both sides. Uh, Steve's got such a fantastic forehand. He, he hit, he's hit a number of dead-ons already today from just not really loose balls, but just vaguely loose balls. And you can just slot them away um, from the receiver side as well as he hits the grill and the timbre from the service side. So, now was that uh, was that no strokes? No strokes. It was absolutely. Chase the last gallery. Yeah, confirms for us. And chase the last gallery. Last gallery. Uh, Steve plays these points. As sure as I've said that, he is going to hit it the back wall. <laughs> it's worth pointing out that... 15 um, loves second gallery. Rob's forehand isn't that bad either, and Steve really doesn't want to hit it to his forehand. Uh, I was talking to Bryn earlier, and Bryn's entire battle plan against Rob uh, at the British Open, where he took Rob to such a great match, um, was to hit to Rob's backhand just all day long. Don't don't let him kind of hit a, a grill from down the line or anything like that. Just just keep it that side. Well, it, you know, Bryn's got a prayer. I, mean, I, I, I like to hit it to his forehand and get it done nice and quickly when I'm playing Rob. No, but you're right. Um, I can remember reading some programs in uh, events gone by, and uh, I think they uh, um, they said in the weaknesses column of our world champion that. Um, one of them was a relatively weaker backhand, whatever that means, uh, and uh, occasional lack of application. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. Thirty fifteen. You write that, Ben. <laughs> <coughs> uh, so this classic father and son battle, good versus evil, is really heating up. If you're Rob here, Ben, do you think you try to do the same thing and tr trust that a similar result might happen, or than are, you trying, to 30, are you trying to press? Well, talking to Rob, Rob doesn't feel like uh, he played his best tennis on Tuesday. And uh, Rob feels like he came out of that, he knows he came out of that three sets to one up. And if, if he feels like he had a bad day on Tuesday, and went three one up, then there's no real reason to change his game plan. So no, I don't expect to see too many changes from Rob's strategy mm. today. Yep. That being said, he uh, that's a great shot there. Of course, Steve camping out at the bottom of the timbre and uh, that's all. the winning gallery. No, y yes, but uh, I, I would, if I were Rob, I would be, I'd be nervous of hoping that a similar result um, came in his direction. You know, you, you he if he loses that yard. first set on Tuesday night, it's it's already two all, and uh, momentum being what it is, it, it could distinctly have been three one towards Steve. Server leads 40 30, chase better than a yard. Time. So, what do you serve to stop Rob Fay hitting the ball in the dead on? Steve's about to tell us. Better than a yard. He gave that a wall a tap every time last night. On Tuesday night, yeah. There's that post off the main wall. Not such timber wall. Game. Oh, 
Club leads three games to one. Familiar pattern here. Fifteen love. I think it's worth talking at some point about the changes that have been made to the Queen's Court because um, they're probably going to play a factor in what happens today. We have the new lights, we have the, the new floor. And uh, so the score out there is three games to one to Steve, by the way. And really, quite importantly, they actually, I don't know if there's mentioned on Tuesday to the listeners, but they actually cleaned the walls, taking out the ten layers of linseed oil that were put there many, many years ago, making the ball grip more off the back wall and, and not act as Queen's has done for the last two decades. I'd heard that, I'd heard that. Obviously having wrong some balls up there uh, helps the situation. Best balls in the world. Not yours. Not your, not your cousins either. For those of you who don't know, that uh, Steve Ronaldson, uh, my co-commentator, uh, Matty, um, well not right now, Ben, uh, he makes all the balls for all the World Championship contests. Chase, medal to three. Despite the scoreline at the moment, um, Rob's not actually going to be too faced by what's going on here. Um, you can't really let the first three or four games of such a large tournament affect your mindset. Um, not enough points have happened for, for kind of the true dominance. Steve leads 40 love. At this stage. Chase better than three. So here's Rob serving a railroad again to defend a chase, as you mentioned yeah. earlier. We nearly got ten was off. Obviously, for fifteen forty. Um, less uh, experienced players and the uh, method of defending a chase by hitting the ball into Chasey the hazard yard, areas 15, is, uh, 40. something you'll see these guys do at will. I think that last shot we saw from Steve has been the biggest change to Steve's game that we've seen. Uh, for the last decade. Uh, you know, Steve's always had this awesome forehand. Nothing <laughs> has changed there. But he's gone through phases with his return of serve volley. Serve which leads 15 40, been chasing really yard. Him down, and his backhand in general. Uh, to using two hands or one depending on what's coming at him. And it's made a huge difference for his ability to perform at this level. Hmm. Yeah, we saw a couple of two hands. Lost the chase in the down. game. Four games to one. Well, it looks all too comfortable here for Steve at the moment. His uh, supporters getting vocal there. Fifteen, love. Okay, that was a double hit. Um, there's a strange rule in this game whereby, although Steve seemed to call it, <coughs> um, whereby if you double hit the ball and it's part of one stroke, it's still legal. If you hit a surface in between your first and second connections, then um, it counts as a stroke against you. Is that a behind the backer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rob's 30, 15. taking a few steps away. He's a, a little frustrated for sure right now. No, Chase, worse than, worse than four, 30, 15. One thing we've seen a lot of so far today is uh, Rob having to hit backhand base. Now, that's not a shot um, that you can generate a huge amount of power on, um, unless you're a kind of a squash player. Certainly Rob uh, generates a massive amount of power, but it's not one of his most powerful shots. So whenever you're forcing Rob to play a backhand base uh, behind the timbre, you know you're in good shape. And Steve's managed to get him to have to do that a number of times already this set. 30 all. 
and this has a similar pattern to other previous sets as well. I mean, those last couple of games, Rob wasn't much in them, but now towards the latter end of the set, he's finding he's finding a way to to get in there. I think Steve and also goal. is very much a player who who kind of likes to win points in a in a in a fashion. That makes sense. He, he, he likes to win them in a chase in West way. Four. Um, sure, he'll take the cheap points when they're available to him, but uh, it's, uh, I think Rob will take them any way they come. So 40-30 to Rob. Four games to one to Steve. Server lead 40-30, chase... Worse than four. So again, Rom choosing his railroad to defend his chase. Well, this is a pivotal point, actually. He's chosen to go on back in that direction. Very strong wrist. Oh, he's got up. lucky there. A little bit lucky, a little bit unlucky not to hit the hazard gallery, so, so. You make your own luck, that's right. Two games to four. Now Rob didn't hit many grills. He hit plenty of defensive volleys. So I don't know whether it was down to him or that, that extra no. that extra no. bit that Steve's able to put Chase on Weston his um, two. forces. Well, you normally expect the world champion very crisp on his defensive volleys. <laughs> He's making four. Well, that last forehand volley. Had a, had a lot more feeling to it than a couple he's hit recently because, um, okay, he had a little bit more space to hit it. But he knows that if he hits the ball into Steve's forehand, he's got to do more than what he has been doing. Because if he misses, he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I there was a low trajectory in there. Well, he's pulled that one off a good three times already. And I think it was a shot he was practicing just before they started. 15 all. Rob's just taking a little moment longer on every point right now. Not sucking in air, I think he's just making Steve wait. I think Steve's someone who likes to be, likes to be playing, he likes to be hitting balls and... Oh, that's tough. Well up. Bit of an unusual mistake from Rob there, um, but again, that, that uh, rally showing his tactics. He, he is trying to keep Steve on the back 30, the 15. and sacrificing what is, uh, in a vacuum, a far better shot, uh, just to keep off Steve's forehand. Thirty all. West two. Another big point. Go on, bet with me. I bet you a pound Rob wins this one. This game? No, just this point. Worse than two and a yard better than second gallery. <laughs> 30 all. For null results, yes. Part of what's created as a result of this massive change of tactics to what we normally see in tennis at this level is that because Rob isn't necessarily choosing to put the ball away uh, as much as he normally does and just go for Steve's backhand, um, Steve doesn't actually have to do quite so much with his backhand. He just kind of needs to get it back um, rather than kind of hit winners because Rob is not going to be quite as aggressive as he normally is. I mean, if you give him a free volley, he's still going to try and smash it in the grill. But, but um, this is making the game very different mm. to what we might have seen for more World Championships. On the chase. <laughs> Better than two. Better than two. Steve 40 30 receiver. That a yard be better than case, second gallery. Comfortably by the looks of things. So I will take my pound. He did win that. He did that win that following point. 
amazing strength there, just wrap that ball off the, as it's touching the side wall. Second gallery. Second gallery, yep. Yes. Rob's going to be happy with that result every time. Probably going for last gallery there. Well, it does bring into play when Steve's at the receiver's end. <laughs> Smash into the back wall, and it's still going to bounce twice before. Advantage, second gallery. Reason you aren't still going to bounce twice before that second gallery. Well, Rob made this decision on Tuesday. He'd rather have he'd last gallery is uh, his opinion to get the service side a good result, regardless of what Steve might do to try and win that chase. Let's see if it works today. One of the hallmarks of these great players is like. Rob just hit that one into his foot almost, uh, and you know what? He'll come down the reserves end, and, and it'll be a distant memory already. I, I really struggle with that. Advantage right? receiver, I, I chase the second gallery, like and I just bust myself up for another game or so. No, yeah, that's a great shot. <laughs> oh, Jed, I've got a similar issue when I walk on court. My IQ yes. halves. I'm struggling to stay in triple figures. Falsely modesty. Oh, that's a great shot. I mean, it's worth pointing out, and it's a great shot, but because he's playing so, so much to his backhand, those shots suddenly become easier when you actually hit them properly. Sure. And they're not going to come back. No, now since I made that bet with you, Rob, Rob has actually won all the points. Serves yeah? advantage, two serves. You don't care. I think you made the bet with yourself, dude. Second game advantage. Yeah, Rob, Rob's a bit uneasy, isn't he? He's kind of looking at Drew about a couple of things, and I think I think Drew just laughed back at him then. I think he, Rob was hoping that he might call a, a nod up on Steve on the previous shot. Rather bizarre. <sighs> really? Advantage okay. receiver, chase the second gallery. On the chase. The only thing is, Rob's had practice hitting that shot into the last gallery for the last game. Game receiver, three <laughs> games to four. Three, four, three, four. So here we are, business end of the set. Rob making a stand. Chase How many left handed world champions have you been, Ben? <laughs> it's not a quiz, I don't know. That's seven, actually. No, I have no idea. Isn't it, isn't it just Howard at Angus? I, I doubt it. There have been knowledge. a number of world champions. That I, I guarantee one of them was left-handed before Howard. Okay. Worse than five, so Hazard, better than two. Oh. I had heard that it was no Howard and, and... It's interesting that Steve chased to see the same serve to defend Chase second gallery as he has done for, for all the other serves. Because, uh, you know, when you're trying to limit... I mean, my dad once said, um, Rob, if you hit a serve to Rob, he's either going to hit a great cut volley, a great cut shot, or a great force, and you need to work no out strokes. what Chase you're worse best than five. at returning. And, uh, you know, Steve's worked that out. But y when you're playing a chase, is it still the best thing to do to open up that corner and give them the last gallery? You know? I think Bryn Sayers is, uh, has a, a strong feeling about that as well. I'm not come from experience of playing a bit with well, I suppose, but... Uh, 15 you know, He definitely serves as a the chase better taking, than two. Uh, Rob's volley away from him.
Howard was the first world champion to be left-handed, by the way. The first and only so far. 15 all. My mum told me. I hate to let you know this, Ben, but I actually knew that. I was, I was try hoping you'd, be, you'd uh, sh demonstrate your uh, knowledge of the game. I don't like to back you up, Gigi. Oh, I think that's the first one in the whole match of those boasts that um, Bob's effort... 30-15! Well, I think that's a shot worth talking about because the, the shot's le uh, Rob's least favourite shot to return was the heavy base that used to come across his backhand a number of years ago. Oh, apparently my dad told my mum to tell me that that was... <laughs> um, right, so if you do a boast you Ronaldsons. from the receiver's side into the main wall... That's a good get. Yeah! Oh, a bit there. Uh, no 30 all! No chase. So the ball that came across Rob uh, onto his backhand side that had been boasted off the main wall, um, he used to slightly struggle with because he's looking for to kind of get the main wall forces out on his volley and then ends up the wrong side of him. But he, he's learnt to deal with that supremely in the last uh, I suppose eight years. Actually. Chase half a yard. 30 all. So half yard chase. Out of court. Yeah, that wasn't a. That wasn't a 40 30. Wasn't a great half yard. Save. Got away with it. And got, definitely got away with it. And um, having now to beat half a yard. You know, okay, so Maymore dead on, uh, he's been known to do a few of those, but. Um, in this match, he's 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 been a bit off off colour on that shot. No, yeah, it's not often you, you see Rob double fault. I think it's fair to say. Uh, I'm really struggling to remember the last time I, I did see him do that. It's also not very often you see Rob put his uh, railroad on the back penthouse. Receiver leads 40-30. It's interesting Chase to see that both of those things happen in the first set. Oh, there he's done it. Unbelievable, right? and I, I think also the national statistic, statistician here, they would tell me whether Game receiver. that was his first one of those. Four games all. I don't recall one previously. Four all. This is fun, Ben. Rackets players out there like these uh, boasts in the world. Yeah, but they might not understand what's going on. I could set you up for that one, Ben. I'm going to get in trouble for that. 15 love. Last gallery, 15 love. There it is again, the last gallery. Do you think Steve feels a bit deflated when that happens? Or is it sort of okay, whatever, I'm going to the other end. Last gallery, both chases. Look at his face there. 15 up. Say, didn't betray too much. Steve doesn't want to be the receiver side. There's no, there's no question about that. But, but um, I think Steve has enough confidence in himself to think, you know, I can beat last gallery. You know. You'd hope so at this level. Uh, uh, Rob's sticking them in there with such regularity that in, in part of Steve's game plan has to be how to deal with the last gallery chases he's got to come up against. So... And it's, uh, and it's an obvious reply to the serves that he's doing. Uh, it's worth mentioning the, the more advanced tactics behind what Steve's trying to do with this serve. The World Championships played over the course Receiver of five leads, days. 15, love. And you need Chase to be able last to uh, last that long. And all the serves that Steve's are doing are causing Rob to generate his own pace. Uh, they're, they're, you know, the high drops, balls that, balls that don't have much um, speed on them in the first place. Rob's actually having to swing at the ball. And after... After a while, um, you get tired. Very true, very true. Come on. 
15 all. Last gallery. Now, we've just been instructed by uh, former IRPPA chairman uh, Jonathan Howe that we need to be plenty more interesting and show him far more insight into the game. I thought you were doing quite well, Ben. I thought I was doing well. 30 15. Thirty fifteen. Rob, what have we got? Another last gallery chase. Another railroad. Always oh, jammed him right proper there. That was good English. Don't retrieve. Rob knows he's just got to keep it in at this point. Oof, perilously close to the winning gallery. Longest rally of the match. It's a big point. No, nope, oh. not up. Yeah, Rob knew it. Rob knew how important that was. I think he wanted to steep in there. Yeah, he did. Steve didn't turn around though. 40-15. Steve taking a moment. 4-1 up here and he's looking down the barrel of losing four games in a row. I think when you're playing against Rob, you're always looking down the barrel of losing four games in a row. Keep that in. Well, Rob's putting an extra effort on those. Those little marginal balls. Yard better than second gallery, 40-15. When you play against left-handers and they turn inside the ball and, and hit that, uh, that force, it's, it's actually very difficult to read because the ball is actually <laughs> lost at some point. Uh, behind their bodies and uh, it, it's a little bit more intimidating to face uh, than the right hander where you're constantly in view of the ball and um, so Steve's actually able to disguise where he's hitting that force far better than a right hander might and also as much as he just hits it as hard as he can uh, he can get some spin off that wall as well she believes he actually 40 15 the second or third game chase a yard night. better than second Rob gallery in time and sort of took it in the shoulder and no biggie but uh, what you're saying is absolutely right then On the chase. Benning is cruising this set. He's the champion. Game Thanks. receiver. Five games to four. One of the very rare four. cut shots into um, Steve's backhand. That, you know, obviously, if Steve gave Rob a chance to hit, Rob would like to hit all day. But, you know, Steve's playing, playing clever. And look, this is, this is what happened the other night. Steve was doing well Stroke. with the PK. And then there was a slight bit of trouble, and he thought love. about a bunch of different serves, which, for this observer, doesn't seem the right thing. You know, you're going to have success, one way or the other. You know, and if you if it's your game plan, then you should stick to it. So suddenly, out of the blue, Rob's hit four shots in a row into Steve's backhand corner, and you know, with 30 love up with the chase. Does that change the serve? You can't hit it, it's not there. What was that, Ben? What was that chase? <laughs> Yet another last gallery for Rob. Very good lefty boomerang. He's used them sparingly. Saw a few of them on Tuesday night, not with much success. Oh, that's trouble. Oh. 
Yeah, the boomerang serve, uh, which is so good when it works and just so bad when it doesn't. And hit the vertical ledge of the dead on that one, which Steve will take, I'm sure. It's very easy uh, to watch this sport and work out what the players are doing right and wrong. Um, it's actually a lot hard to keep your head together when you're on court. Uh, there was the World Championships in, in Newport where uh, we've spoken about this before with the Caterpillar where Rob kept serving it and, and, and Tim kept on trying to do too much of it. And then there was the time when... Actually, I'm going to be quiet here. It's a quite important part of the match. Just see what happens. from Steve. Yep. What a fashion, what a fashion. Finishes the first set in the gallery. If I got that right. Uh, I think so. Well, there's something ominous about this now. Oh, am I jumping the gun, Ben? Well, we were talking to Lockie Ducar before, and um, a former world number one. He never actually won the world championships, but went to 7-6 against Wayne Davies uh, in one of them. And uh, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter how good you are, um, winning four sets in a night is tough. It's tough in terms of concentration, uh, you know, all the factors, luck. It's tough to win four sets in a row, so. Right, well, Ben, uh, as is with many commentary positions, this a bit chilly here opposite the reception at the Queen's Club. Uh, I think the next change of ends I'll hand over to uh, Matty again who's back from his third comfort break and uh, let him uh, regale you with his stories and impart his wisdom and, and what have you. I'll, um, I'll think about you when I'm at the bar. Hello everyone, back from the bathroom, Thanks. first set to uh, Rob there, we go. 40 love receiver, chase 4 and 5, and uh, 40 love up in uh, this game. Lost the chase, boomerang winner from Steve, 15-40. Thirty forty. Thirty forty. Steve coming back in this game. Good game to win, having lost the previous set. As a chase, worse than second gallery. So Ben, it looks like uh, Steve's uh, going to play the boomerang a little bit more here. Is, th is there any reason why he might do that now rather than on day one or at any other time? Well, I think to be fair to him, I, th I think he served five now, and he, he d there was one terrible one, but he's had some pretty good results from the others. So uh, it's, it's not um, it's looking looking to be a reasonable choice at the moment. But but 
but would he favour it on day two when the balls might be a little bit more worn, perhaps? Well, you need to get some grip with the boomerang when the ball hits the back wall, so that when it comes down and lands on the 30, side 30, 40. It, it actually straightens up Has and a chase stays parallel with the back second wall. Gallery. So that could well be a factor. Real shot from Rob to take the first game of the uh, game serve up. sixth set. First game. And to win his sixth game in a row. Chase better than six. Another grill from Rob to take the first point there. Yeah, Steve pinging the ball around a bit there. I'm surprised he chose to do one of the bases that he did there. He's got such an accurate straight force. Why, why, why go for off the main wall all the time? Here, here. Make make a, a reasonably accurate straight force, I should say. Hmm. We'll make a very interesting comment at the change of ends, but just, just looking looking back at that first set there as Rob goes forty love up in that first ge uh, in the second game, you can't help but sort of think that the first set was all all Steve again and yet it's Rob who takes it 6-4 and it makes me wonder something about Rob's not at his imperious best from 2004 and so on and so on but perhaps his retrieval is that good that he has this ability to not be at his best and somehow still eke out these gains whereas when Steve's impressive he still hasn't won that set there Drill from C for 15.40. Yeah. And another. It, it's worth mentioning these last two points that Steve won have been off the boomerang again. And the thing about the boomerang when it goes wrong, it can be terrible, but you're still forcing people to generate their own pace. You're not allowing to hit a main wall dead on off the back wall that's already got the speed on it. You're forcing them to swing. And we might not see the results from that now, but we can certainly see the results from that in the fourth set. Yeah, I agree. Got to win a couple of sets between now and then, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, what? Rob's getting into his mid 40s here, and I think I think we've got to consider the fact that he's not as as fast as he used to be. 
and um, I think Steve's game plan from from day one is quite clear. He's trying to make him work for every point. He's trying to move, move him up and down the court as well as side to side. But he he's got to then capitalise on the good work he's doing. And you kind of felt like he bossed day one, and he still was three one down. And he kind of did it in set one, and he's down again. Sooner or later, you've got to capitalise on the good work that you've done. No way. No way. Helicopter. Oh, wow. Bit of emotion from Rob there. Not sure quite that was about. Back to juice. Again, another another bubble forcing a uh, you know a, a weak response from Rob. Not that he had much chance. But Sorry, I meant boomerang. Everyone knew what you meant, Ben. It's fine. Another gallery from Rob. Juice one chase. That's a great serve from Steve. So talking about former World Championships, Rob, uh, one epic World Championships was Hampton Court, where Rob was six sets to two up against him, and then it went six all, seven six uh, on the final day. And uh, I've got to say, um, I mean, Rob had blisters on his feet. There were, there were issues with um, with lasting and so forth, but uh, Tim was just carving the volley return of serve for four sets and he got the fifth set and he just uh, you kind of felt like strength was a factor when it got to that point you just couldn't keep doing it another girl from Rob Rob take it back to juice there very solid point point. and so many times the points are won as a result of a good first piece you know the serve or the return being so strong mm. Another point to Rob advantage. And a hazard chase, advantage Rob in the change of ends. I, I think I'm starting to see a pattern here, Ben. I mean, it, it just seems like the points where Steve's on top, Rob is finding a way to make him play one more shot each time. And, and the points where Rob's on top, he just finishes it. Mm. It's just like, this is my point, I'm having that. This is your point, let's make you work for it. And, and, and overall, he, he, he sneaks a couple of points he maybe doesn't quite deserve, he, maybe he shouldn't be winning. But you add all those points up, and we have four sets to one and one, one game to love and advantage.
just serving a boomerang on a hazard chase. You really open up those galleries if you miss. And he's paid the price. Two games to love to rob. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's been serving the boomerang well, there's no question. But serving it on a hazard chase, I mean... Yeah, I mean, let's face it, he's still a left-hander with a left-handed railroad. It's not the end of the world to serve it once in a blue moon. I'm talking to Bryn earlier, um, because of what they've done with the walls at Queen's, the railroads apparently now at Queen's are actually able to bite back just that fraction more. I mean, it's still not as much as a lot of other courts, but you'd think Steve would be able to manage it as a lefty. You wonder whether he's been practicing it all this time, you know, he's doing all this other stuff. Yeah, Queen's, Queen's removed a lot of the, uh, the linseed oil out of the, uh, the walls uh, a year and a half ago or so ago. And that's very much changed the complexion of how this court plays. Gallery, gallery. There it is again. It's, fu it's funny, I mean, you know, you, you regard Steve as the gallery man and um, Rob is the guy who bludgeon chases and volley returner serves to better than a yard and yet we have this complete reversal here. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if Rob would predict that this is going to happen but suddenly it's Rob saying, right, you're going to push me out wide, I'll take a gallery, I'll take the service end and, and Steve's the one who's trying to get these sort of worse than six along the, the back wall. Yeah, that's a great shot there. It's actually really quite hard to defend everything that Steve might do when he turns like that, but um, that particular shot, great. If you can get the ball to just die on the wall at chase four, it's a long way to go. So 30-15, Steve. And 40-15 now, force the air off Rob on the volley. <laughs> and that's the game. One game to two, Steve uh, on the board in this set. So Rob's starting to adopt the railroad a lot more here. Steve, it's perfectly legal to volley off the roof there, even on its way back to the hazards. <coughs> Did think did Rob just step inside a forehand that time? That's it. <laughs> About time you saw that from Rob. <laughs> and Rob seemingly deferring to a first serve railroad now. And the railroad has become a better serve at Queen's since they've done this to the walls. And certainly it's fairly standard to try and serve a railroad to a left hander. Yeah, especially Steve is so good at stepping inside uh, onto his forehand. I mean, again, you know, you talked about the energy. It takes a lot of energy to serve a railroad for four sets, and I think Rob's probably aware of that at the moment. But this is the time where if, where if he wins this set, life becomes easier for him. So you feel like he's making his push at the moment. He snuck another cheap set, and now this is the set that he wants. And here he goes, winning gallery. This is where he's pushing forward now. Again, Rob's putting a lot of energy into that railroad, but and, and yet this ball still isn't coming back to the side wall like it would do in other courts. But 
Maybe he figures Steve can't quite do enough with it, and it's still worth doing. As long as he can keep him on the back end, he can keep him sensible. Steve needs. It's a point to Steve, but it's a point after seven or eight shots. You know, he's making him work. He's making him use those legs and then winning the point. More of sort of bouncing off the walls to sort of stop himself. It sort of reminds me of me a little bit. Well, again, you see that railroad, loads of energy in it, and the ball's still miles away from that side wall. It's a lack of desire, I think. Yeah, and, and Steve has managed, um, again, we should talk about how, how much better Steve's backhand has got in these last few years. It's, it used to be, it's, I mean, <laughs> a liability is unfair, but uh, just compared to his forehand, it was, a, it was like Charlie Sheen would say, a droopy-eyed, limbless child. Um, As Charlie would say, uh, I, I wouldn't personally, but uh, it, it, it is interesting how someone can be that good and have such a weakness, and he's got a lot better at it. Oh, but, uh, he said in, in his backhand has had to... He's had to get better, and, and, and this set, he's managed to, to get a few chases, a few winners with that backhand. But uh, um, I still wouldn't say, it's some, wouldn't say it's something he can rely on at the World Championship final. And uh, Well, when Rob's been serving those loose, loose railroads that, that aren't by the wall, Steve has actually said, boof. So... Point to Steve, 40-30. Kind of feel he needs this game. One thing you notice about that last point is Rob slightly overhitting a shot to Steve's forehand because he knows he has to do a little bit more. Yeah, you can just you can just punt it in there on his back and he's not going to get that much danger but the minute it's loose on the forehand it, it, it's problems so he, he's got to put a bit more on yeah and of course that will lead to the odd error I guess we often forget watching these guys who are so good how small that racket head is compared to the ball compared to any other sport and, and how, how, <laughs> how difficult it is to keep hitting the middle of the racket every time And, and when you force people to put more m more effort into their shot than than they used to, then they will hit the frame from time to time. Point to Rob. Advantage receiver. Advantage to Rob there. Great main wall dead on. Finally got a bit of room from that boomerang, and he's uh, finished it well. Last gallery. Well, uh, Rob's able to hit that main wall force because, well, he hasn't hit many. It's his, it was his signature shot for a long time, and part of serving against Rob Fay is not allowing him to hit the main wall force. And Steve has done a very good job of, of, of uh, negating that shot today. Which is great because the, the worst thing about trying to stop Rob forcing is that you invite him to volley return a serve, which is his other signature shot. So, so to sort of stop him doing both is, um, well, certainly something I'm glad Steve said. Serves advantage. Not, not me, though. Chase it, it, the last it's, it's gallery. Not easy. Last gallery. Yeah, Bryn was doing reasonably well at the, the British Open uh, with the same job. Oh. 
left foot. You can see left Seaford foot. coming mm. on the volley there. Game to Rob. Three games to one. Game serve up. He leads three games to one. Yeah, Steve He's actually read that wrong, didn't he? Normally yeah, he'd be across there. Either way, though, his forehand volley is the best shot in his game. Why isn't he stepping up there and taking it, whether it's going back penthouse or not? I mean, Well, maybe Rob's tactics are paying off. I think Rob's trying to keep Steve away from that corner, and Steve can't be that extra foot across to, to get all that stuff now. Interesting. Has a chase, one and two. Ben, what's got to change from Steve here? And Ben's. Under Pence, More than yard what, what in his game has got to no change uh, if he's going to turn this around now? I think he's getting a lot of chases, li like that last point, so hitting the ball hard and low under the, under the, the dead arm. It's, it's, um, Rob does the Agassiz thing where he knows he's beaten, you know, accepts that the chase and walks <laughs> off. And, uh, as uh, I think Jed mentioned before, you know, Rob's getting chased last gallery, so maybe you did, and, and, uh, and Steve's smacking the ball low to try and get those chase sixes to get service side. So w we know that he needs to be service side. No stroke. He has had patches where Hazard Rob's been in serious one trouble. And two. With the Hazard, Hazard. Um, but okay, he's reverted to the railroad this time. The hazard chase. But it invites the 15 forward. love. And point to Rob. 15 love. Just, you know, that, 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 that's the, last the conundrum that Steve faces. If he, if he protects the galleries, he invites the yep. force. And Rob says, thanks very much. I love that point. Notice how Steve's railroad actually managed to stay by the wall there. Good return from 15 all. back to 15 all. Um, I tell you what, I wouldn't like to play Rob Bay. He's just so good, isn't he? It's really annoying. Stroke. I'm going to take up Snoop. 30 15. You've seen Stephen Lee. He's a big fat guy. He's good. That's the way forward, isn't it? Pick a sport where you don't have to play a guy who's so blooming good, age 44. Enough said. Another dead on from Rob. Raining balls on the court there. 40 15. And he's got a point for 4 1. Chase, worse than 5. Worse than 5. Well, 40 15. This is the question everyone's probably thinking. You know, Steve's won one game in. Not many, uh, quite nine, a few. I, mean. I think it is. Yeah, and um, <coughs> something's got to change. As Jed mentioned earlier, what 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 actually changed from four one to six four in that first set? Well, I mean, this is this is such an interesting thing because you know we talked about Rob sort of hustling points and and sort of being very clever about controlling the score when the other guy's ahead and then really accelerating when he's ahead. So I mean, you're always going to have momentum. Chase worse than and five. Steve's got to find a way to do more on the points where he's defending. You know, it's all very well, you know, pushing the guy around and, you know, winning points and looking in control. But when the other guy's in control, you've got to make him work for his points too. And I just, I don't feel Steve's done that today. I don't know, I don't know about the first day, but I just don't feel he's Game done that up. on the Rob points. I'm, I'm sensing Four games to one. I don't think Steve's moving nearly as well as he was in the first set. I thought Steve was actually moving really well in the first set. He just, he just looked, I mean, that last point, he looked very, very good for some reason. But the point before, when he was service side, he didn't move his feet. And, um, it just doesn't seem to be bouncing as much. <laughs> it's got to be tough here. Four sets to one down in the World Championship. You've played in, in so many ways that... that the, the game you wanted to, you, you, you've trained for this for, in Steve's case, probably about six love. years, and you're executing a game plan which you think is going to work, and, and you, you've rattled the guy, and you're still four sets to one down. So, you know, what do you do to pick yourself up? What do you do to change? What do you say, okay, how do we make this grey-haired old fart yep. struggle with what I'm doing? I mean, I've done everything I wanted, and he's still beating me up. I don't envy him in one bit.
15.30. And caught 40.15. You can just see the body language of Rob now. He know he know he's absolutely where he wants to be. He's got a lot of energy knowing he's on top. It's amazing how much energy you get when you're winning and how much it saps you when you're losing. And Rob is four seconds. Thirty forty. He's game point for five one. He looks you know, he looks like a twenty five year old right now. Yesterday, uh, Tuesday I get the impression he was looking a bit tired, he was struggling a bit. He's now suddenly Ace. there's energy everywhere. Worst than last gallery at thirty forty. Heavy on his feet. Funny, so Rob didn't get those last two points, but in both cases, he is still skipping his feet along like mad to try and get there. So, um, yeah, he is moving very well, Rob. Yeah, he's got a set in the bag. I mean, un no, no disrespect to Steve, because you know wh where he is in a sense failing is so many <laughs> other people have over the last nearly 20 years. Um, <laughs> you know, Rob, Rob is not the sort of person who surrenders a 4-1 lead. He knows when he's 4-1 up, he's not going to 30, lose. 30, 40 receiver leads, worse than last games. gallery. And and so he knows he, he's he's comfortable in this set. There's no way this guy is going to. On take the chase, set away from gallery. Unfortunately, you couldn't say that about Steve in this championship, and indeed most people over the last 20 years. Five games to one. And there's the confirmation, 5-1 Rob. Can you see Steve winning five in a row, Ben? No. Now, now that's interesting because, you know, Steve's thinking exactly what we're saying. And Fifteen love. He's let Rob hit that last gallery every time, and that's I think that's the first time today that we've seen him step up and just go, <laughs> oh, I'm going to cut it off if you're going to do that every time. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the beauty of this game is is the number of possible tactics and the, the cat and mouse aspect. And so Steve's saying, well, if I'm going to go up there, and Rob's saying, okay, well, you're actually going to give me the backhand corner now. So... Again, maybe we'll see Rob slide a couple of one-yard chases as Steve uh, swings at a ball that isn't there. Once again, you kind of feel like Rob's on top of the tactical battle and Steve's having to chase the game. And that's exactly where Rob wants to be and it's exactly where he's been for 20 years and it's exactly where, once again, people are coming up short against him. Why he's such a great champion. Begs the question, 30, is it that these guys no aren't good enough to beat him or is it that he such is the mental strength of one's game in real tennis and when you are mentally <laughs> on top of the game it's just so hard to overcome someone. I mean he, he's had this all over Steve for what, I don't know, what, 15 years now something like that. Well, it's a very relevant thing. I was talking to a world champion of a different sport, and he said that he feels like 25 percent. Game server. He walks on. Two games to five. They've already lost, and um, yeah, fantastic game from Steve there, though. Some back to two five. Stay competitive. Yeah. Second gallery. As much as I hate talking about myself, and I do, um, I had a my crowning moment and crowning failing moment in, in my real tennis career is I was playing Rob in the European Open second round last year, and I, in the third set, I mean, you, you could argue he was in, I hope second, second gear gallery and third. the door. He was, I, I actually had no strokes. two set points against him. The first of which I was defending, I was attacking a one and two chase, and I didn't beat it. I then managed to set a one and two chase of my own. I served a giraffe serve, which I've served for 22 years, and I, I missed it by a mile. 
I so nearly served a double fault on my second serve, depending on one and two chase, that he was able to just sprint up to this thing and hack it to worst. No strokes. Yard chase and, the and, second and gallery. My chances. Second gallery. I can serve a bobble. I can serve a giraffe. I missed it by a country mile. Such was the bizarre nature of the fact that I had a set point against this guy. And I mean, we'd expect the number two in the world to be doing to be doing better than I did, of course. But, the door. but <laughs> that's what he does. That's what he that's what he makes you do. He makes you play badly on the points that matter, and it's because he's able to punish you for for your that's mistakes more than anyone I've I've ever seen. I mean, maybe others have in the past, but. Rob's got two sets of f two points for five one now. Yeah. Do you have a vocal, Adam Phillips? Forty love. Oh, sorry, there. It's forty love, Steve. Totally wrong there, sorry guys. Fifteen forty. Chase. Listen six, fifteen forty. Strangely. I don't really have a problem when I'm playing rock. <coughs> I'm not going to win. <laughs> I've actually always found that Rob's one of the nicest people to play against because he does have gears and then he chooses the right gear for the spectators to play against you so that it's a nice match to watch. Server leads 15 no, 40. No Chase, worse than six. To go against me too, but just maybe we could have won a point. But, but yeah, he, 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 he just he knows. He knows what level he's got to play at under any situation, even against these top guys. They have their their purple patches and they have their weak spots, and he seems to know when to push back against uh, their strong play and when to really capitalise on their love. And, and Game server, up. Three games to five. And Steve, the reasonably convincing game from Steve there, actually. I can't think that Rob's worried, but you know, having said all that we've just said in the last ten minutes, but you know, I, I mean, it's good for Steve to get a couple more games on the board. Maybe if he wins the last two sets, life becomes interesting again. You know, it's funny we see we see a miss from Steve down in that backhand corner, but then you've got to ask yourself how many times has the ball ended up in that side? It's very uncharacteristic of a Rob Steve match, I guess. Second gallery. Fifteen up. That's, that's what Steve doesn't want. You can't give him a cut volley into it. 30 love! <laughs> Back end corner. Don't give him a cut volley. Don't give him a force. And don't give him that thing where he can just hit last gallery. Do something else. Do something that he can't do any of those three things do. I mean, it's not like he's amazing or anything. Just stop him doing absolutely everything and you'll win. It's as simple as that. If everyone's listening here and they want to know how to beat Rob Fay, do all of those three things. Just stop him doing everything he's good at. And you'll beat him. Like that. Do that for another six sets, and you've got the work. Fifteen thirty. Sets. Simples. Again, Steve's showing how good he is when he does get a loose ball in his forehead. Why you wonder about those balls have gone over his head into the grill? You know, why not just volley it anyway? Whether it's going up or whether it's going in, whether it's going wide, just crash it back. It's what you're best well, at. Well, he normally does, though. This is why he's the number one doubles player in the world. I think even Rob would admit that because he, he there's no holds barred when he plays doubles. He just gets in there and smacks it. Yeah! <laughs> 
30 all. 30 all. Point for Steve now, and it gets interesting in this set. I've kind of given Rob the set, but of course he hasn't actually won it yet. Second gallery, both chases. 30 all. It's often been said about the left-handers in the game. We've got Jamie Stout coming along now as well, but um, if you used to stick Steve's forehand with Camden's backhand, you've got something that can beat Rob. You know, uh, Camden able to retrieve so well, control the main will forces coming at him back to the timbre, um, get cut volley return of serves out the corner because he's so nippy and fast. Maybe give Steve some of Cam's legs as well. Thirty all, chase the second you've gallery. Got one serious player there. So, um, but Steve has got better on the backhand. It's better, but it's, it's still not nearly as good as Cam's back end, and maybe so easy to watch and say where they're going wrong, but I mean, <laughs> the reason his back end looks so weak is because his forehand so ridiculously strong. Um, you know, the only reason Cam's 40, forehand doesn't look up. really strong Chase is because the second gallery. Steve's forehand is ridiculously strong, and yet his back end looks unbelievable. And then we pan back to the right-hander on the other side of the net, and the guy seems equally good in both corners. Good course there. No, I, I think Rob say his forehand's better than his backhand. Right, but you're still not going to get it past his backhand. I mean, he may not smash grills from nowhere, but <laughs> you're not going to beat him that often. And, and that's the thing, I think everyone knows you, you can beat Steve in his backhand corner. And, you know, Rob may beat you in his forehand corner, but at least you're not going to beat him comfortably in his backhand. There isn't that, that weak out there. <coughs> Chase worse than four, juice. He's putting a lot of effort into his uh, double-handed volley from the serve game, which has been something that he's changed quite in the last four years, and it's really started to help him. Absolutely. And, and it, we're starting to see a little bit more energy from Steve again. I, I think he's, he's... Did Drew just tell people to shush then? Was, it, was, it, was that, was that, was that, an, was that a Mr. Phillips? <laughs> who knows, who knows? We might hear a little bit now. <laughs> Adam hasn't listened anyway, that was definitely him. <laughs> Service advantage, worse than four. <laughs> worse than four, Chase. No, no target hit there from Steve, you had the, the galleries, you had the grill, he hit neither. Oh, I, mean, I mean that that to me says it all. I mean he has a he has a sitting ball, he hasn't Juice. hit the grill, he hasn't hit the timbre, he hasn't hit the side galleries, and he's ended up losing the point from winning position. He needed that point. Point to Steve, advantage. Yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> choice of return from Rob to kind of boast the ball advantage. I mean, it came loose for Steve and put it away. <laughs> that, that, that's what I would have done the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Juice! Back to Juice. Looks like I'm fly li flying solo for a little while. Uh, Ben's uh, left me.
Last gallery. It's a last gallery chase, but once again, it's, it's a shot from Steve, which is neither yes. a short shot for the timber, nor is it a grill. It's kind of a medium pace shot to the back end, to the, the back wall first, and, and he's given Rob a free shot, and, and he, had a, he had a free hit, and he hasn't, hasn't used that. Out of great, great boomerang, he's got to advantage, but it should be game Steve, four, five service end now, and now he's got to go and try and win that point from the receiver's end. I don't get it. I don't get it. He's, you know, his forehand is so good. He's just pushed one under the grill. And he's he's not put Rob under any pressure, whether it be time pressure because of speed, whether it be um, room because it's so tight. It, it's neither. He's just sort of plopped one in there. And I'd, I would expect more from him, if I'm honest. Anyway, still, advantage, Steve. Advantage receiver, last gallery. And Juice. volley return of serve in the net, and it's back to Juice. And it, in my opinion, it should be game Steve already. Case five, Juice. Chase five. <laughs> well, let's have a little game. <laughs> uh, it's a set point to rub now for Quite a lead in this tournament, and I think a large majority of people are wanting to win this game just to chase five. keep the day going. on that forehand. Great serve as well. Yes. Last gallery. Steve does a loose serve, and Rob has a chance to hit the ball to his backhand. He almost invariably has. And uh, Matty missed the last two shots there, but um, he's out of the room. But um, last two shots being serve good example. Of that. If, if I was Steve, Chase the last I think I'd be gallery. trying to pinch a little bit last into gallery. my backhand corner if, if I saw my serve was loose, because Rob has hit the vast majority of those shots cross court. Pinch. And cover the main wall force. Get low in the corner. <laughs> that was actually a beautiful point from both players there. <laughs> and that is the set to Rob Fay. Five sweep sets it, to one, uh, Five sets Game to one, in the set. I think we're having a, a potential break Six in the sweeping of the court here. So, um, if anyone needs we're to pee... just going to clean the court. <laughs> I really should have waited two more points, shouldn't I, Ben? So, I, I guess now now's the time when we shouldn't be shutting off and we should actually be saying something. Uh, it's 5-1, Rob. Um, <coughs> Steve... He's played a lot of good tennis in two days, and Probably. he finds himself staring down the barrel somewhat. <coughs> he has to do something different. 
something somewhere, whether it be his attitude, whether it be his energy levels, whether it be his tactics, something has got to switch so he he can take take these next two sets. He absolutely has to take these next two sets, Ben. What does he do? Well, I think it's unfair to, to suggest he's not doing a large number of things right. Um, in, a, in a sense, uh, the set score has been 6-4, 6-3. That's not a killing. On, and that's and um, it might only take one more thing to go right for, for some kind of switch around. But um, what that thing might be, again, so much this game comes down to the set pieces. You've got the serve, and if the serve isn't good enough, both these players are going to kill it. If the return of serve isn't good enough, both these players are good enough that they will win the point from the server side. So it's not really about the rallying and the tactics of the rallying, it, 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 which is why we see so much focus here on what's happening, what they're doing, what they're thinking about when they're serving and where they're trying to return the ball. Because once you get into rally, they're, they're both so Ooh. capable of doing, of, of retrieving and, and, and hitting winners. It's really, you know, Steve's... It's interesting, these two have played each other, as you say, for two decades now, and, and they're still kind of working out what the best serve. I kind of get the feeling like Steve started serving so many boomerangs because he did a couple of good ones, went, oh, you know, let's do that. Um, yeah, I guess I'd like to think of his, his team as anything to write home about than that they would have had that plan, but uh, I don't know, my, my feeling is that is that Steve's getting his opportunities. He's he's creating balls on his forehand corner, but he's at the crucial time. He's not just saying, "I own this point. I am going to win it." And and that is, yes, okay. It's what Rob's done for twenty odd years, but um, that is something which, when you can take a point away from someone and say that is absolutely mine, not only do you get the point itself. But you get the psychological boost of it's hitting that grill. There's that booming sound. You hit the dead on netting. It, it, it just disappears. It, it, it says target hit. Maybe it hits the bell. Maybe it hits the winning gallery. It, it's, it's not a guy hitting it into a net. It's a guy having no chance to get the ball back. And, and, and certainly what I've seen today... Not overall targets, maybe necessarily, but the really important times when there has been one to hit, yeah. Rob has just said, "Yeah, I'll have that. Thanks very much." <laughs> one thing we should all realise is that this nothing necessarily needs to change for this to start for the scoreline to start changing. Um, we've got, we're talking about longevity, two players' bodies, uh, tiredness setting in, and over the course of a, a five-day match, um, both these players will feel different bouts of energy at different times, depending on <laughs> you know how their bodies are holding together. And, and you can never say die anyway. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's six sets. Of course not. And uh, so Steve's got to keep plugging away. And Steve, you know, really should be assuming that he's in better shape to keep going. And... If he wins these next two sets, he's got momentum with him going into the last day, and he's the younger younger guy. So you know he's got to hope that age starts to play a factor now that we're two sets in. Did you, even, do, do you even think that uh, uh, this towel. break here right now? I mean, it's certainly a quantum blow. I, I don't know about Melbourne. There, I didn't see this uh, two sets uh, cleaning of the court. This Is this going to affect either of them? I mean, it's going to give well, Steve a chance to rethink. And I think Rob asked for this because he needed a burger or something. Just on that side. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, they're both starting to feel actually the court was getting a bit slippy. And uh, who is this actually going to help more? Well, if the Oxford and Cambridge boat race didn't go by, <laughs> then uh, I think Rob's going to break a racket. Ladies and gentlemen, the players are and, ready. Uh, Please take your seats. Have Thank you. Back of the boat, but, um, Please take your seats. Huh? I don't imagine yep. this little break will make too much of a change. Was it actually a heart attack the guy had at the back of the boat? Or something bad. It's rowing. I mean, come on. Oxford and Cambridge, two of the, the weaker universities for sport in the country, battling it out on TV when all the better universities have no chance. I, I, I have no comment. Thank you. Please sit down.
Laugh, brah. There seems to be nobody sitting in the side galleries from what we can see at the moment. The queue for that disabled toilet must be, you know, queuing back halfway up to the buttery right now. Thank you. Well, they're going to have to wait now. Set score is server leads, uh, five sets to one. Into the seventh set, level. Rob certainly doesn't look tired. You probably don't when you're five sets to one. No, it's hard to look tired when you're on a winning streak, isn't it? Chase half a yard worse than six. Bolt. Again with a point before Steve choosing to hit a one-handed return of serve force on the low volley and two hands with the high one. Sometimes Steve works himself in some crazy positions through needing to run inside the ball like that, doesn't he? I mean, that didn't look comfortable. No, and you know one of the c the great strengths I think of Camden is he, he's very happy on his backhand, so he doesn't have the need to just dance around it every time. I mean, we can see why Steve does it. I mean, that shot's pretty much on Rob didn't even try and volley it. It's just too good. But but uh, at what cost are those points that he gets right when he contorts himself into a forehand position? Well, I think it's only 10% of the time that he really shouldn't do it. He's pretty good at picking the ones where he needs to and the ones where he doesn't. But uh, yeah, but you've been 30, talking 15. about a, a six four six three scoreline, you, you know, and we're, we're looking Alfie at a five West one six. five one set score, right. and ten percent, yes. you know, that's quite a lot. You can tell Rob's focused because he's asking what the score is, and I'm not being sarcastic, by the way. It's um, Rob, you know very often do genuinely doesn't know what the score is and has to check because he's so focused on the points you know I'm just trying to win this point oh, great get yeah. great get Steve maybe <laughs> he, maybe he needs that little bit of luck a little bit of magic that's you all take this first game Forty thirty, half a yard worse than six. It's a little, uh, funny enough, the the level of these two guys is a little unusual, particularly on this court where they play the British Open. That um, that they don't read that. Uh, we take it for granted, but actually, Rob and Steve have been picking off whether the ball's going to be hitting the timber, uh, you know, entirely, again and again and again. So w when you see one of them read it wrong like that, it's, it's almost surprising. I hate the timbre, yeah. 40-30 receiver lead. Pain, but yeah, th Chase these half a yard worse than right six. Now, you kind of get find yourself thinking they're going to get everything right. And of course, you know, this court does, not this court, but the, the game of real tennis does serve up things which are just impossible to say definitively <laughs> that is going to yes. be one, or one thing or the other. Juice in this first game. I can't imagine Drew's enjoying those fault serves much. They're right above his head. Well, I think Danny's calling him, isn't he? No, just either way. It's, <laughs> it's going to hurt, right? Vantage receiver. Tiny bit of room, pops it in the backhand corner. Error. Advantage Rob. Chase fell in the yard, advantage. Oh, no, it's, uh, down. it's on the floor. Well, we both thought it was a straight. No, common sense don't say that, are they? No, that was definitely Chase. I, I, mm. I that he was down. <laughs> <laughs> straight well, too. Well, surprise. <laughs> mm. Well, you know, it's a tough. It's, it was. It was pretty much floor and racket at pretty much the same time. So, uh, 
<sighs> oh, here comes Adam again, covering up most of the camera. <coughs> Perfect hair. <laughs> Serves advantage. Chase better than a yard. Yeah, come on. Oh, that's a great force. Juice. Another point to Steve there. Another another racket error from Rob. Maybe well, just uh, racket it. I think. Advantage receiver. Un <laughs> there was an error. error. There was an error and it came off his racket. I'm not saying it was an error. So, uh, you know, a, a potential stroke would like a bit with the with a chase instead of a stroke. And then First game, set seven. Steve's won that game. Some great shots. Fantastic, accurate forcing. But it, but again, it's the <laughs> it's the energy was up there. I mean, Steve's pumped. He's he's pushing hard. I mean, I know. One of my favourite matches to watch a cam against Double Steve ball. because there's two really pumped guys getting pumped receiver. against each other and it's terrible. The amount of energy on court is insane. And Rob's never really been one for that. But I, I think Steve, look at that, he's just sprinted up to that ball. I think he needs that, that energy. He needs to be pumped. He needs to throw everything he has at this guy. You leave anything in the tank and, and, have you. and I think he's got to do that right now. He's got to throw two sets worth of insanely high energy at Rob. Yeah, like that. Doesn't matter, it missed. Just saying, here I am. Gallery, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for you. Yeah, and that's the, the shot Steve wants all day. Doesn't matter how high that volley is, Steve's confident with it. 30 15. Worse than second and chase six. It was interesting, you know, because um, Rob started serving these railroads, which is encouraging Steve to, t to do those volleys, and Rob missed a few of the, the volley forces that Steve hit at him. But Rob, Rob's not scared by that. Rob's like, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep serving those if you want to keep hitting them at me because I'm going to get, get in the zone and start putting those away. Uh, Rob, Rob genuinely is not going to be ever be terrified by Steve's backhand um, volley uh, force. And actually one of the points is in this game, Rob, uh, Steve's put one of those, <coughs> those volleys into the net, so you know, 30, a lot of this is a percentage this game, and I think second gallery. Rob, is, Rob does play those percentages very well. He knows what percentages are going to win him games, sets and matches. 30 all. Chase six. Another backhand error. I mean, that wasn't that difficult, was it, Ben? I mean, by their standards. Forty thirty. No, no, I mean, Steve would normally expect to. Steve would normally expect to get that back. Uh, no. he, I think he was trying to make a shot out of it, go for the galleries. But game to Rob. Game receiver. Game. One game all. It's good to see Steve pumped about losing that though. <laughs> so he's, he's reverted back now to hit what, what you might call his type A serving game from the last 15 years. He's serving railroads from the middle of the 15 court. 15 love. I think he's... And Rob reverted back to just smashing it in the dead on when it's loose. So. <laughs> right. What do you say? I mean, he's, he's tried a different tactic. He's five sets to one down. He's gone back to what he no. does. And Chase two, 15 love. He smashes it in the dead on. Uh. Mm. Bryn, Glad I'm sitting here. Bryn Sayers made a point earlier uh, about what he thinks Steve might do to serve against Rob. And uh, respect to Steve on the tactics he's chosen. They've certainly done him some justice. But um, Bryn thinks that Steve should serve a sidewall railroad that hits sidewall penthouse off and um, encouraging the return of serve volley um, but 
not the force. Is that not going to once again invite the, the gallery shot? No, I wouldn't have thought 30, so. 15. It, it, Unless it, 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 it bounced. If Phase it's shortened, two. If you mean. The minute it's on the back 30, wall, 15. it's straight in the galleries. But I guess you, it's a short, li like that. Yeah, like that? Like that, yeah. Oh, thank you, Steve and, and Rob, for illustrating what Ben's saying so well. That's a higher tempo. That's what he needs. Bang, bang. Serious speed on his shots. Don't give the guy time to set up. Don't give him time to get in position and attack you. Make him stretch for shots. Keep that tempo up, Steve. Two sets you've got to do it for. I have no allegiance here particularly. I guess 40, I'm just 30, sort of naturally behind two. the underdog and wanting to see more tennis and wanting to see an interesting Saturday. But so, you know, I, I want to see Steve pushing Rob harder on, on point after point. And I want to see him keep that tempo up. Rob showing there what a true champion does with the loose boomerang then. <laughs> Main wall. Boff. Boff. Savile, 40 isn't it? 30, chase 2. Chase 2. So 40 30, Rob defending a chase. Five sets to one down, let's just hit him. Advantage Rob again. Lovely timber winner there. Out of court, yep. game! Straight force cross court, it's always dangerous. And out of court. Still leads, two games to one. Well, he's been getting a lot of um, mileage out of hitting the ball kind of just slightly r to Rob's, ever so slight to Rob's backhand with that shot. But do you want to hit to Rob's forehand just, w you know, within hitting distance? I'm not sure that's, that's the thing to try. 15 love. The thing is, this is this is this is what makes a champion a champion. I mean, you've got Steve stepping inside a railroad. He has no right to step inside, and and he's got himself caught in a muddle. And it's one of those ten percent shots you're talking about. He's just given a free point to Rob. He's trying so hard to make the guy's life difficult that he's making his own life almost too difficult. No chase. And that's what he makes you do every time. Great return there from Steve, though. 30 15. 30 15 now. Yeah, that one was wide enough. I don't think you want to hit it just. You never want to hit a shot just yeah. a metre to the right of Rob's forehand. Yeah, four or six years ago, though, Rob would have stuffed that one in the grill, but um, <laughs> he's happy to let those go these days, I guess. There's the difference. So Rob puts one of those balls up to Steve and he just sort of threads it back in play. Steve puts one of those loose balls to Rob and he just, thank you very much, my point. Don't give me that any of that rubbish. I'm taking that point. To be fair to Steve, Steve would have hammered that one shot too. Well, but this is a thing. I don't think he's been doing that today. He said a lot of 40, 30. And he, and he hasn't put them away. 40, 30, Rob. Steve almost took that ball off his shins. <laughs> Try and get onto the forehand now. 
and it's going to Rob again. Juice! No, it's not. It's juice. Half a yard worse than six. Juice! One chase, juice. It's a little unusual for Steve not to read that. Half a yard worse than six. Ball. Okay, Ben. So I'm starting to think. I know what you're going to say. I'm starting to think that 10% is more like 15. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, we. You look at the difference between a um, a six five set and a five five six <coughs> set. The difference is somewhere around 53% to 47% swing. And, you know, so actually you add all those points up where Rob gets a free point and he's only got to play a certain percentage really well to get on that 53% side. Quickly, please. Vantage receiver, half a yard worse than six. It's micro tactics all the way. On that minute level, he just makes you do that little bit more for each point, takes a few more free ones and gets on that 50% side more often than sometimes he, he ought. Lost the chase. Bien gauche. Juice. Juice. Back to juice. No, he's calling us. He's calling them. Rob was questioning the serve there, which. Then he's calling those. Juice. Just a bit more sharp than Steve. Far in there with a bit of cut on it. Get it biting down. Service advantage. I haven't seen enough of that, I feel, tonight. Well, he's capitalising on Rob missing two main wall dead-ons in a row. And this time. Has he been doing that this match so far? Oh, and game to Steve. Game serve up. Two games all. Has a chase a yard worse than second gallery. That, that was nowhere near the grill. It was it was neither a forcing shot nor was it a, a soft shot. Yeah, I mean, uh, what, what we, if, if uh, Rob was playing against, let's say, the Chase three best right handers in the world, with uh, at no least two, well, one shot in that rally, um, it's, it's going to just be hammered for the tambour or grill. And, uh, and this is what, you know, um, who's to say that, we could, that the right handers could do the same if the, if the rolls were reversed? But I also think Cam would have done the <laughs> same. I think he, he would have bludgeoned that one into the tambour. Yeah. But, um, you know, Steve hits what seems to be almost a defensive shot and a shot that a, that a right-hander no is strokes. looking to win the point off. Half a yard worse rod. than six. And uh, that's why this six. World Championships has shaped the way it has. Bottom line is Rob's a smart guy. He knows that. Has it a yard <laughs> worse than second gallery? Has it? Has it a yard worse than second gallery? Okay, no strokes. Has it a yard worse than second gallery? Does anyone know what the score is? Yeah, I love that return. It's low enough that, that Rob can't volley that. 
Just drilling it. Chase low two and three. And low and cross court. He's had reasonable success with that shot today. The court. And then the arrow. 15 all. Up. That percentage is game again. Very one of those really impressive ones. There's there's one in the net, one out of court, one that doesn't do as much. I just I, has he trained hard enough on that shot? Has he done enough six, seven weeks ago, two years ago? Wow. That he can use that right now. Thirty fifteen. Rob's getting this uh, railroad to to stick to the wall now. Chase. Chase better than two, 30-15. And there we see the dangers of missing the grill against Steve. And better than the second gallery. I remember speaking with your father um, some time ago when I thought I could be any good at this game. This and he gave me a match analysis and he asked me what I did wrong. And I said, was it this? He said, no. Was it that? I said, no. Uh, he said, no. Uh, he, he, he faulted nothing I did on the day and I said well what have I done wrong he said you did not train hard enough six weeks ago leads 30 match. 15 you did not do enough chase better than two before the match to better do than what two. was necessary at the match yep and you know I just look at that that double handed return of serve and there's some good ones in there definitely there's some good ones in there but is it good enough has he been training hard on it, which is not his strength? 40 over 15, the last better than second four years gallery. To make sure it is a weapon rather than something which isn't as weak as it once used to be. Well, I have to agree, but I, I still think it's an awful lot better than it was. You know, of course it, it is. It, but we're not, we're not saying, is it, is it better? We're saying, is it good enough to be at a world championship? Is it good enough to affect Rob's overall game plan? Is it good enough that he doesn't need to keep trying to turn around all those shots he's been turning around when he doesn't, shouldn't really be doing it? That's a nice shot from Steve. Again, loose forehand. Yes. Just seems to win that point every time. I mean, certainly for the last few games, you've been talking about that loose ball. He, he doesn't have a problem on the forehand with that loose ball this set. Not this set, no. I agree. Check from Steve, take advantage. Service advantage. And um, you know, we've got to say that Rob tried to hit a great shot there and slightly loose, and Steve just nailed it. I mean, his forehand's really serving him well here. <laughs> Any cricket fans will know that the, uh, the, the wicket will change from days one to five. Um, Game serve up. And he leads three games way, to two. More than anything, the balls actually change from day day one to three here. You know, they, they start off with this sheen on them. Uh, they're very fast through the air. They they don't spin quite as much. Um, they don't even come off the racket in the way you might expect. And then suddenly a certain amount of felt comes off, and suddenly they grip on the strings. They grip on the penthouse. They grip on the walls. And, and I just wonder whether this boomerang, suddenly the balls have, have got to that stage where they're gripping on the penthouse and the pen, and suddenly the boomerang becomes a good serve. Day one, it, it, it's no good. And, and suddenly he can start changing his entire way of thinking. Last gallery. Get away from second gallery where Rob's just chipping last gallery. And he can start planning a new type of way of playing to, to give Rob something to think about again. I think if, if it's relevant all. to the boomerang, it's even more relevant to the railroad. Last gallery. Um, as the balls lose the fluff, that railroad's going to come back along the wall and they're going to start clinging. Last gallery, both chases, 15 all. <laughs> so that's this interesting thing in one way or another. I mean, that's certainly, I would say, a good thing for Rob. Uh, he's going <coughs> to stop Steve turning inside 
any of them, but for Steve, I mean, if that if that becomes a viable option, then then once again he invites the potential for a minimal force. Yeah, the strange thing about Rob is he seems to hit the better the railroad you hit, unless it's flush, and you know the easier he finds it to hit that main wall force. It adds to the angle somehow. Fifteen all, last gallery. Will has his second to win the point there from Rob. So 30 15, Rob. 30 15, time. <coughs> Superb winner. Good aggression from Steve at point two there. Last gallery. Yep. Trying to do something with the serve. Almost managing it. <coughs> and another one. Good aggressive boast there. Kick spitting Left off goal. the wall. Yields the error. 30 all now. I mean, in some ways, this might help Steve. If he stops 14, kind of messing 30. around stepping inside that railroad, maybe he's just going to suck up that he's got to play a backhand and he might play better shots. No, I can guarantee he's not going to stop stepping inside. He did actually try and step inside the last one, but then didn't. So. Yeah, exactly, and he stepped inside that one and stuffed it on the penthouse. Oh, cheeky. Everyone expects the winning gallery. Probably game server, three games space. all. And that is game three all. Vital seventh now. Not set. <laughs> 15 love Steve. We can win this game, win this set. Win the last set of the day, you know, forgetting the fact that Rob's gone five one up, he'll be five three and he'll feel he can he can uh, he can attack that on, on the final day. So massive, massive part of the game right now. If you had a statistician we'd be able to tell you last time someone won from six two down on the final day, so Half yes, a yard this worse is than uh, last gallery, fifteen love. Just such an important time in this match. Out of court. The joy of not knowing you have to play well for the entirety is what Rob's so good at. The minute he gets ahead, he knows he can coast for a set. And then just when it really matters, that's when he turns it on. That's when he uses those energy reserves that he has. And that's when he makes it count. Steve needs to at least force Rob to win two sets in that final day. Out. 30-15. He beat one of the best guys in the last 20 years on blisters at Hampton Court in 2002. Yeah, he, he needs to have to win two. <laughs> Chase three. <coughs> Rob telling himself off there because uh, he is playing against the left hander and when Steve steps inside he puts a cer certain amount of uh, side spin on that ball so that when it hits the back wall it's actually going to come back into the gallery wall. The mm -hmm. um, thing is that didn't used to be the case at Queen's to this extent and Rob's played as many matches at, at uh, Queen's and as many sets at Queen's as he has anywhere else in the world <laughs> and uh, that, that change <coughs> is uh, <coughs> a relatively new thing on this court. Server leads 30-15. It is, but he Chase half he a yard worse than last that. gallery. You'd expect him to figure oh that out. Oh no, half he was telling himself off. He knew. Yeah, well, he knew exactly. So easy when you're you're watching it. Winner to Steve. Yeah, and Rob's annoyed himself there because he tried to get cute on the return, and that's the first time we've seen him do that three. today. And he's saying, for goodness' sake, concentrate. 40-15, Steve. It's a railroad now. Then comes the, the, then comes the railroad, the then comes that cut volley. Straight away. Actually, knowing Robbie's probably not 30, saying 40. No. Uh, 
something very similar in Australian, I think. Game serve up, four games to three. Steve leads 4-3 in this uh, vital seventh set. That's chased the door. <laughs> no strokes. Fifteen love. Fifteen love, Rob. It's just so hard to get a, a, a good chase out of Steve in that uh, in his forehand corner, isn't it? He always at least gets a racket on it. I've only seen two balls go past him today on that side. Oh. <laughs> it's a very very unusual error for Steve there. Thirty love. Very love, Rob. So Jed was talking about this earlier. You know, Steve finds himself ahead this set, uh, as he has done a number of occasions in this match so far. <laughs> and <coughs> that's when he makes two <coughs> two errors out of nowhere. Really love chase the door. I, I mean, assuming Rob wins this game, which he hasn't yet, but that all that good work is undone. All of it. I mean, is that nerves? You get ahead and buff, buff, mistake, mistake. <coughs> Well, <coughs> I mean, you'd like to think not nerves. I mean, I think I think emotions are involved here. I don't think they're nerves. I think they're it's something to do with belief rather than nerves. I, I Server leads forty love. We talked about that. Chase the door. You, but someone's got to step up there and say, I don't believe any of it. I'm younger. I'm faster. I'm fitter. On the chase. <coughs> a little bit lucky from Steve there, 15, but he's won the chase. 40. Maybe thinking more about the service end than, than the next point. He needs to get back down there. See if he goes for the dead on or not. No, he's gone for the dead on. Yeah, that's a great oh. shot. Rob's not happy about something. He's not happy about his serve. 30 40. It's like, okay. come on, you can't serve that. There's that chase. Make him run a few yards, then not pick it up. Three and four, 30-40. It's not so much that he's got the chase. It's not so much that he's got a chance for the game. It's the fact that Rob is not playing the point he wants to play. It's not Finally. often you see Rob flustered. You see him just toss that towel down into Hazard first there. It's the fact that he did not have it the way he wanted it. And if you can get Rob frustrated with how the way the game Receiver is going, leads, then 30, you tend 40, to get a chase, few three and four. bizarre points from him. But uh, so far today, I haven't seen enough of that. I'm sure, of course, it's very hard to do. Lost the chase. Yeah. On, very good from Steve there. 40 love down, and he's back to Juice. Juice! Gallery. Uh, great get from Nod there, but again a couple of defensive backhands from Steve that Can't reach it. might have done more. Juice. But he did at least get Rob to force onto the penthouse again. 
forget the fact that he got out of jail. Rob will not be happy with the fact that he didn't do anything with that force. And suddenly, Steve's doing to Rob what Rob has been doing to Steve for six sets. He's taken Answer his last gallery. a game which he should have won, and now he's staring down the barrel of 5-3. Do you know, I've noticed that they've actually misread the timbre an unusual number of times this set compared they? to the first two. Steve had a great Martin big receiver, out that last the last that gallery. Rob read timbre and it missed. So. Mm, it was a bit framey, I guess. Yep. Lost the chase. Ooh. Juice! Yeah. I guess that's unlucky. Back to Juice. Chase worse than two, juice. Yeah, come on, Steve! Mm. Adam always the first person to scream that when Rob sticks with him. Well, <laughs> Adam knows certainly how important this is now. He he knows that if Steve can get to two all, then he's got a he's got a shot. So uh, I think people would have expected Rob to get that one back and. So he, he's, he's really trying to show Steve how important that point was. So for those of you who don't know, Adam Phillips has been uh, Steve's what, practice partner slash... I don't think practice partner. He's not fast enough for that. He's in his camp anyway. Serves advantage, worse than two. The guru, shall we say. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> A lot of love out there. That's game, Steve. Five games to three. 40 love Rob in that game. Yep. I mean, no signs that Rob's, Rob's necessarily tiring. 15 love. Rob, yeah, he does get tired, but it's the frustration. If you can somehow frustrate him, it doesn't happen very often, but if you can somehow frustrate him... Last gallery. Was he in the grill there, or was he pushing a timbre? Not sure. I think I think Rob's been frustrated a number of times in this tournament so far, and still come back to win the set though. And um, but, I think but, but Steve think wants to close this game out. But do you think that's because of what Rob's done, or because of what Steve hasn't done? That 15 all for Steve is that um, Rob hasn't out. had to do that enough today. Exactly. And uh, uh, getting Rob running now, well, he's got the energy to cope with it. Mm. Last gallery has a second I. gallery. Well, exactly. I mean, th this is it. I mean, I mean, 15 all. Rob's won those first two sets, and they were relatively close. But you didn't feel like he was puffing doing it you felt like he's had energy in this third set and you know maybe Steve will win it maybe he won't but does do you really think Rob is going to be s ri ridiculously stiff tomorrow morning is he going to is he going to be paying for the pain he's had to go through to win these sets or has he is he is he won them at a physical sort of 80% oh well ground well, throughout Rob's career, he's not. There's been certain people who'd rather not face. Last and gallery. Nick Wood, who'd make him run. Camden, who'd make him run. You know, when Camden was playing his best. So, uh, 
But no, I don't really feel like Rob's necessarily had to push himself physically. And the problem is, I mean, in order to push Rob and make him run, you've got to have... 30-15, hazard, second cut, gallery. You know, to, to, uh, to do that and, and, and play soft and still be able to hit winners and stuff. And you know, one of the problems with playing soft is, is it's hard to then take winners. You know. 30 all. I think that went in. Um, oh I Forty thirty. Damn it, bloody headache does he? <laughs> nope. Chase three. Steve can be seriously disappointed if he doesn't wrap this up now. Tough chase. Serber leads 40-30, chase 3. question is, can Steve win this final set today and really, really make it interesting? I think he's taking a bathroom break now. Danny, Danny, can you go with Steve? To so, Maddie, what do you think was different about that set? Because Just it's a 6-3 set. Now. It's a convincing set as far as the score goes. Mm -hmm. So, what was the change? Well, there were, there were more points... I think, where Rob wasn't in charge, whether it be c was because Steve's boomerang was working better. I mean, uh, Steve's initial tactic to get Rob out into the, uh, the, s the, the, the fault area under the grill, uh, he negated with the last gallery chase most of the time. And um, uh, as good as it was to stop him forcing and cut volleying, uh, Rob had a, a way of saying, well, fine, I'll take the service end where I'm stronger than you and, and you hate that receiver's end. Whereas with, well, the, with, with the boomerang, he, he managed to create a couple of free points, a couple of points where he could hit an easy winner. He's going to go on the fade camp for a little while. And, um, and, and he was able to frustrate Rob a little bit into not playing the way he wanted. That's good. Like I guess. Now, but I'm not what do you think? I think Rob's going to want to win this set. I mean, it's the difference fine. that this set is going to yeah. make to the complexion of the last day is ridiculous. Um, at six, I don't want Susie coming down. At six two. Probably oh, can't get down anyway. <laughs> I can hear everything Andy's saying. <laughs> At 6-2, uh, Rob's been there a number of times Who before. Who wants some more tennis? And... Yeah. Oh, we want more. There's a game next door. And I think you're going to see Rob seriously, seriously... Because, as, as we mentioned just not, not, not that long ago, Rob hasn't been pushed physically. He's got a lot of beans left in him. Uh, really and, you know, Steve's been up and down, bouncy, bouncy when he's kind of feeling it and, and not otherwise. And... Uh, I think Rob's going to come out exploding here. He's always been able to turn it on <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it matters, and um, we mentioned before it's incredibly hard to win four players sets. Are ready. Row Please take your seats. Uh, but I, I, I think we're going to see Rob. The match score here. stands at five sets to two. Yeah. Receive up. I agree. Thank you. First game level. Mm -hmm. Bit of a bounce from Steve. That's what he needs. Another set of bouncing around. 
high energy stuff. Don't give chance Rob a chance to dominate you. Make him flick stuff back. Fifteen and love. Frustrated. Love. Little surprise, Rob missed that actually. I agree, but I, did, I just think if, if any chance of an error is going to come, it's because he's rushed one way or another. Last gallery, thirty love. Last gallery chase there. Last gallery, worse than the second gallery. Must have hit that ball pretty hard to worse than the second. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of topspin on there, so it stayed up for the first bounce for a little while. I think it was so close enough to the dead on that it sort of hit that sort of slightly painted area. You often get a slightly different bounce, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's a big, strong guy. 30 love receiver leads. Last gallery. Interestingly, Steve is now there for the main wall. We mentioned earlier on a couple of sets ago you know, that Steve wasn't actually getting Rob's main walls, but now he's there to meet them. Mm. So he's kind of worked out that, that Rob's not just hitting him loose forehand. He's not <coughs> hitting touch shots into Steve's fine corner. Forty love, worse than so second gallery. Steve's able to pinch um, across into that corner. Receiver, taking first the game. games where he's on top and just dominating them, then it makes Rob's job a hell of a lot harder. So often he's gone Score, up 40 love, love 40-15, and he's either had to win it from Juice or he's ended up losing the game. And that time he got to 40 love, and bang, game straight away. That's mine. Wilson Rob, 30 love. 30 love. Again, that's not a Steve uh, shot Steve wants to hit. He wants to send it low. Rob's feet when he's hitting that backhand volley. Yeah, don't, do not feed that forehand volley. That's not cool. That's a chase worse than a yard. 30 love. It's so interesting. I mean, he often hits his hard balls on that backhand volley with one hand. Yet the control, <coughs> yet the firm ones two-handed. Yet the control ones two-handed. Forty-one has a chase. I mean, I'm so happy I'm not a left-hander for that return of serve. I mean, they, they certainly benefit during the rally on the, <coughs> the forehand to forehand type type strokes. But having to generate power on your backhand is. Such a bizarre thing, yet one of the hardest shots I've ever seen was hit by, by James Stout, and it was a, a backhand volley return of serve. I Receiver leads, 40 love. There's obviously a way to do Hazard it. Hazard chase, <laughs> Hazard worse than a yard. Not easy. Game. Game, Rob. One game all. One game all.
15, love. Another semi three point for Steve with that uh, boomerang serve. a ridiculous boat from Rob. How'd you do that? Chase worse than last gallery. 15, love. Second gallery. There's an argument to say that these boomerangs that, that are working are obviously brilliant. They're kind of forcing a very weak return from Rob and then Steve's able to put it away. Um, but the bad ones, because of the unusual aspect of Steve's game, mean that Rob doesn't <coughs> necessarily hit the shot that he might normally, m normally hit, or at least um, Steve's Steve there just covering the back end side only. Chase, if he, you know, worse he than last gallery. I'm probably just going to cover my back end here if I give worse Steve, than last uh, if I give Rob such an easy 15 return. love receiver, worse than and last. And he's kind of there for it now, uh, which he wasn't in the first two sets. Lost the chase, more so than a yard like worse. He's, he's worked out what to do when his serve gallery. goes wrong. And when the serve goes right, it's fine anyway. Yeah. Point to Rob. 30-15. Stroke. 30 all. Point to Steve. Just nick that one. Will for Rob there to go 30 30. 40 30. Stroke. Right here. Right here. Come on. <coughs> Juice. Great shot from Steve there. Back to Juice. Hazard, better than the second gallery. You talk about the difference in energy levels. So you see that, that yes. shot that Rob just hit there. Steve's out there with this kind of customary putting his racket up to see if it's going to go in the grill. And, and there were a couple of times in the first set where he wasn't doing that. You know, he, he was guessing mm. instead of covering. Mm. And um, this is representative of the extra energy that he Martin. has. Yeah. That said, I mean, you know, we're in set four or day two, and I, I don't see Rob being tired at all. I mean, you, you've got to marvel at the man's fitness. I mean, you look at, you know, Redgrave winning his fifth gold medal, heaven knows what age, and Paula, Paula Radcliffe's uh, marathon running pace after popping two sprogs. And Serves advantage. But, you know, and I guess Hazard in endurance chase. sport, you do Hazard peak a little bit later gallery. than some of, the, um, some of the other sort of sprint-based sprint sports. But it's absolutely unbelievable. He just looks fresh as a daisy. 44, is it, years old? Fourth, fourth set. I don't know what's happened there. Well, you're as old as the woman you feel. Oh, 
Someone out there enjoyed that point. <laughs> oh, I think Adam's wet himself. Game server. Two games That's to game one. Game to Steve. Two one. Two one. Makes sense. Two games to one. Out of court. I mean, that's a terrible, up. terrible serve from Steve. And it's just, I was just about to say it's not what he needs, but you no, know, he's, they're he's they're doing all right off those bad. But yeah, so Rob's ranks. missing, and he's missed a few of those now. It's, he, I think Rob tried to reimpose himself there, and he tried a little bit too hard, and and it's it's an out of court force, and Steve's 15 love up on a point he shouldn't be. Last gallery. 15 Rob, love. Rob has this amazing ability to recompose after such a short space of time, and he's back hitting his galleries and back to his game plan. He's played the volley winner. Oi. He, he's coming forward. He's making Rob have Thirty a very up. short space of time between points here. This is what I'd like to have seen more of from set number one. Uh, Rob's first one out of court. See why I'm in charge? Little dispute on the score there. Uh, Steve Thirty up, up one with chase. One, one chase pending. 30 love serve up. Last gallery hazard, worse than second gallery. Just, just a chance to see a carbon copy of day one here. You know, Rob, Steve's had chances in a couple of sets and, and not taking them. He's taken a set pretty well. He's now 2 love, 30 love up. He's got a chance of uh, getting to 3 1. Um, 3 1 is exactly what he was at on the, on the fourth set of the, of the, of the first day. And um, uh, perhaps it'll be a little bit different today. Who knows? Um, I'm sure the neutral out there would love to see a, a two all score line. I'm sure Gibb. Camp Rob wouldn't, but. Um, 30 very, love, last very gallery. Interesting. <laughs> 40 love. 40 love, Steve. Hazard, worse than second gallery. Hazard, worse than second gallery. Yeah, slightly unusual mistake there. Rob had a bit of space. He just. Um, Hazard, worse than second trying gallery. To slide it down into those hazard galleries. It's a, it's a tough pull at any time. Let alone uh, set number four of the World Championship. Yeah. Right. Game. And game three, 3 1. Deja vu or not? Yep, Steve's Steve been ahead in a number of sets. Three games to one. You kind of feel like he should win this now, but. This unusual forehand uh, volley error from Rob on that last one. But once again, the tempo was up from Steve there. Didn't give Yard him time to, the second to gallery. And Hazard, bed in the door. Once again, just the chance for winning gallery, but unlike in those early sets, Steve's up there on the volley, smashing it back at him. Hazard, bed in the door. But again, the point created by the serve. I mean, uh, Rob's hit two railroads in a row there that, that have given Steve enough room to move inside and just crack a forehand. And, and uh, I was kind of expecting Rob to be able to serve a railroad which didn't give... Doesn't give Steve that room. No strokes, is worse than the second gallery. Is that concentration? Well, or? no, it's possible worse Rob's trying to serve to, his, serve to his volley, and so he's not really bothered about sapping the back wall, and Steve just uh, jumped inside a couple, and that's going against Rob's game plan. But you have to serve differently if you're trying to force a volley than, you know, a tight wall on the back wall. But On the chase. 
15 love Rob. 15 love receiver, hazard better than the door. On the point there, but it, it's, it's so interesting. I mean, it, the, 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 the court has changed. All. Steve didn't get anywhere near the side wall on that railroad. No, he, he they're, got away they're with all it. coming out a long way still, aren't they? So, the thing is, it sort of skips off that penthouse. It's not as easy as just curling it back. You've got to get it to stay near, near the side wall in the first place, and <laughs> it's easier. Case said than done one on and two, well. fifteen well, all. Earlier on today, Bryn made a point that it, it, it's uh, it's the back wall's relevant, but it's also the penthouse. The penthouse undulates a little bit mm -hmm. around where you're pitching that ball and uh, it's very hard to get it to do what you want it to do on the railroad. And better than the door. Mm -hmm. 15 all. How do you get better than the door though? <coughs> oh. Those of you who remember Julian Snow um, who actually played in uh, the World Championship final against Rob a few years ago. So about 95? Uh, We've got it's probably an even year, I should imagine. But um, he, uh, one of his favourite serves was rail. But he used to do a topspin railroad here at Queens. Fifteen all. You know, never mind what the kick back into the wall. Chase he one and two. Focus far more one and on, two. Um, on the bubbles he's got getting on the roof. Lost the chase. Thirty fifteen. Thirty fifteen, Rob. <coughs> chase better than the door. <coughs> 40 15. Uh, an error there from Steve, but actually, I think that's the right shot for him to be trying. Game. Game to Rob. Two games to three. Fair thought for your uh, your camera crew and um, team here as we um, we're in the, I think the lawnmower shed of the uh, the Queen's Club and uh, the temperature draft freezing our nuts off. Te temperatures dropping somewhat here. Yeah. Drill from Rob. Was in fact 98. 15 love. Uh, Julian uh, challenged. Oh, 2005 was close. I said 95. <laughs> Chase four and five, fifteen love. Bite me. Yeah. It's a sudden change of pace from Rob here, he's gone up a gear. 30 love. This is what he's done so well over the years. He's just raised the tempo now. Before you realise what happens, he's nicked a game or two. <coughs> First he's got to be 30. careful. He's got to recognise that change in tempo and respond. Back to 30 all. That's well played from Steve there. 30 all. The thing about lefties off the timbre is they can misread it, as Steve just did, and still pick it up because their their left arm's obviously further behind their body and they're able to uh, adjust to that ball. A little bit stronger back there as well. Mm. Four and five has a second gallery. 30 all. Missed target from Rob there. I don't think he'll be too upset about it, but uh not when there's already a chase. I mean, it's pretty rare that either of these two would want to hit a hazard second gallery um, and concede the service side. But when there's already a chase four and five, and it's 30 all, it's if you're going to do it, that's the perfect time to do it. Yeah. yeah. There, there. Uh, you, you can quantify errors, and that was not as big an error as it could have been uh, earlier on in the game. 30 all. <coughs> 30 all. Chase four and five. Four and five. 
On the chase. And that's a super shot. Yeah. Rarely getting past Steve's four home there, but. Uh, 40 30, Hazard, second be going gallery. And in the first place. Let's test this railroad. Game. Again, again just so much room. <laughs> Someone's brought in some blankets. This is absolutely fantastic. Three games all. Again, uh, as Maddie was saying, that just the, the, the room that, that Rob had Thanks, to hit Rachel. from that railroad. Fifteen love. Expertly struck. Oh, I'm really cosy now. so nice to see some proper things. <laughs> yeah, after all this rubbish, it's good to see the match just sort of run around for a bit. <laughs> what a round. It's also good to know someone's listening, and thank you, Rachel Heslop, for, uh, for bringing those blankets in for us all. Um, I hope there's other people out there listening. Chase. Better than half a yard. 15 all. A few too many loose serves in a row here for Steve. He needs to tighten up now. And the second gallery, 15 all. Every time. Every time. It's kind of like Steve's missed a few lengths on the boomerang and gone back to plan A and set one. I mean, it, it, it's so interesting. To I mean, I know it affects me and I. I'm so far down the list, but I I even at this level, it just a couple of couple of misses, <coughs> and and suddenly you start doubting your ability to hit a certain thing against someone of, of Rob's caliber. And um, 15 all, chase better than half a yard. You know, actually, actually Neptune blankets we've been given. They actually have Neptune blankets. Well, it is the Neptune yeah! uh, championship, so. Uh, because they are too. 30 15, second gallery. Point to Rob there. 30 all. 30 all now. 3 all, 30 all. Can't leave anything in the locker now. 30 all. Any cliches you want to put in there, Ben? Australian, you can talk about the bush, I suppose. <laughs> First gallery, that's you. <laughs> two chases, study all. Thank you, Ben. Okay. Um. Thirty all. Chase the first gallery. Steve first gallery. At this point, he'll feel happy about the next one. He's got a better chase second time round, but. Big point for both of them now. Yeah! Point to see another loose railroad that Rob did nothing yeah, with. Yeah, Rob's going to be annoyed at himself three and his four. selection on that first one. I thought he just kind of did based on the gallery. He sort of splattered it in, in no particular way.
Ooh, lost the chase. Just gone along, lost the chase, and that is game to Steve. Four games to three in the final set of the second day. Game serve up. Four games to three. Time, please. Any more chat? As a neutral, I was... Four, three, uh, seven leagues. Might not get to the stage at the moment. Steve's come back really well from two sets down. He really looks happy well. as well, doesn't he? <laughs> Probably because he's, <laughs> he's still playing. Last gallery. I mean, it wasn't looking good. It was three one down going into the day and two sets to down on the day. But he's, he's pulled back really well here. Can he can he wrap up this set now? Last gallery, both chases. Forget how far ahead Rob is in the match. No matter what happens. No if Steve wins the set, that'll really, really frustrate Rob. Especially from two sets to love up. Yeah, still four set to one, four sets, four sets on the final day. Is what Steve will need to do should he win this set. And we haven't seen that from him yet. It's a lot easier than five, though. No strokes. Chase the last gallery. Last gallery. Ooh. Soft ending for a great point. Um, a great point, which could have been won a few times. <coughs> but, um, Fifteen love server, last gallery. Probably going to say the railroad again. This has been Rob's serve of choice to defend these chases. Bring out that double-handed backhand volley. Oh, it's Bando. Uh, it's underneath. He used up most of his lives on that point. 30 love, Rob. 30 love. Game to Rob. And, and, and if you're going to take one thing from that game, <coughs> Rob just managed to serve a full game of rail. Game server. But didn't Four allow games Steve all. to hit a forehand and, and didn't find himself in too much trouble, particularly his last two points. Here he goes again. Second gallery. Again, a good serve, forcing a weak return from Steve. And Rob will be annoyed that he didn't kind of hit Tambor or Grill there, but. Um, Yep, he's found a groove with this. Fifteen love. At least Steve knows he's got that chase now. He's going to get down that service end before the end of this game. Oops. Ooh. Yeah, another another very good railroad, and and Rob failing to capitalise, but. Uh, Fifteen all. He's not going to stop serving it now. Second gallery. And has it half a yard. Oh, that's well left. Oh yeah. Fifteen all. If you 
could see inside this commentary box now and see the, uh, the head sound technician looking a little bit like Red Riding Hood but Blue Riding Hood uh, in Neptune Blue. Um, well, you can't, but we can, and it's funny. 15 all, Chase, the second gallery. All right, so Steve's saying to Rob... Oh, no, another boomerang. Out of court. That's a superb serve under these circumstances. 30-15, Hazard, half a yard. Fault called. Thirty all. It's only when you missed the first one you realise that actually he's just spotted them in there when he's wanted it. I guess that implies he is human. Second gallery. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that the first time Bob's hit above the galleries when aiming for them? I'm going to say no because it's Second been four gallery. sets and there must have been a time when that hasn't happened but... Uh, I can try to remember it, but definitely no. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, the beanies have gone. Advantage receiver, chase the second gallery. So what do you serve to defend second gallery? I guess you... Yeah. A railroad fault, I guess, but um, I guess you try and get that double-handed volley in play again. Oh, oh no. Yeah! 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 Juice! I hope that squeal was Claire. <laughs> Hazard, second gallery, juice! Mm, just pressurised the opening there, Steve. Got up there and made him say, hit it past me if you can. It's that high energy I was I was talking about. Again, it's been a while since Steve's been able to turn inside one of Rob's railroads. <coughs> oh, you don't often see that from Rob. Advantage you really has a second see gallery. Rob pumping the fist from someone who drills it into the net. He's th he, he wanted that point pretty badly. Well, I think he also knew that he, he'd actually given Steve the chance to take the point himself and uh, to come away advantage up when he could well have been advantage down. That's, that's quite a big swing, and that's going to really buoy him into this, this next point here. That was really advantage receiver! Advantage receiver! <coughs> Hazard, second gallery. Should finish this. Missed. No, not up. Yeah. Oh, up goes the racket. What's going to happen here? Not up. Can he take a break here? Can he Jeez. get a warning there? Um, <coughs> interesting, that's the third time in, in, um, that Rob's missed above the galleries when going for them. Time, please. I don't know what that hit. 
It seemed to sort of pop Jeez. out somehow. I think he thought the ball was up though. Second gallery juice. <coughs> yeah, we're, we're both with uh, with Drew on this one actually. For what it's worth. Not a lot, probably. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Anyone else can see that frustration on Rob and they somehow second gallery. take that into that volley that, they, that Steve just played there, but Rob's very quickly going to get I'll over that little, if you need me. that little <laughs> drama <laughs> and he's going to play this next point yeah. strongly again. So for those of you who didn't hear that, <laughs> Drew just said, I'll be in the car park if you need me. <laughs> Always want to see the... Service advantage! Things. Chase the second gallery. Keeps him sane, I suppose. It's a, it's, a, it's a long distant memory now that uh, that point as Rob goes 5 4 up mm -hmm. in the final set of the day. <coughs> Thank you. Game serve up, five games to four. Strong first point from Steve <laughs> there. 15 love. 15 love. Ooh. Definitely a lot of tension out there. Can't can't imagine why. Number winner from Rob, 15 all. 15 all. Fun. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, Rob uh, hit a bunch of good railroads, and then he's just gone back penthouse, miss, miss, back penthouse, miss, kind of thing. So could be nervy. This is what I like so Change much about better than six. Camden's Fifteen challenge all. Is, is he's so self-assured that he just had a, a, a two fingers attitude to Rob and said, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you think you can do, I'm going to beat you. And, I mean, okay, he fell short. Better but than six but for and a better first, than half a yard. Effort, Fifteen all. Uh, most people don't get anywhere near. And he, he got to seven five and, and he came out of day one at, at two all and... He just, he just seemed to say, I, I don't care who you are and what you've done, I'm going to win this match. And this whole way through, you've kind of felt Steve's... I don't know, he's just, he's just felt like it's just too hard all to beat the guy. Better and than I think six. if you're going to take the crown or someone like that, you've got to be bigger than him somehow. It's probably Waffle. No, not up. Great catch. Good catch. 30-15 receiver. Better than half a yard. <coughs> now, you see, Boomerang is an interesting serve to serve on better than half a yard. There's a bad one. He's giving him a shot at it and he's taking it. Yeah. Oh. I'm, just, I'm not sure I'm serving a Boomerang on better than half a yard. I'm serving something like well, now it's um, 14, it's points 15. per 6-2 in the, in the set score. Second gallery. Mark shot from Robbie didn't try and win the point outright. Play the correct stuff at the right time. He's smart on that. He wanted the server side for the next set. Beginning of day three. That's what he's thinking. His league's ahead of us. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I hadn't really thought about that one. Thank you. Time please. 40 15. Server leads. Chase the second gallery. Ooh. No. Chase off. Thank you. Chase off. Chase off. Still 40 15, Rob. 40 15, server. Time. What Keep. Steve? What can Steve find here? So nearly found the winning gallery on that shot to finish the date. Yeah. One of them saved. Thirty forty. 30, 40. Seeing these first serve faults, I mean, you know, th there is that slight fatigue, but <laughs> he won't care much about that now. Back pen test again. Mm. Chase. That's smart play from Steve. Chase worse than four. Should be odds on for 30, this point 40. now. Back to the service end. Yeah, it's a good point you make. Uh, two games ago, Rob just said tight railroad, tight railroad, again and again and again. And, and for the, the, the last eight or so railroads we've seen, uh, you know, the... the faults or back penthouses. The stats have been out the window, so... That's I think S serving railroads, it, it, you know, getting it back in, it may look easy when he does it, but it's not. It takes a lot of energy. It takes Receive a lot leads, of width. 30, 40, it's a lot of chase, worse than four. What's he going for? Oh, missed by miles. It's probably a good thing. Bobble's probably the right choice. A little bit loose. He's again, he is human. Back to juice here. Does Rob often turn inside the ball like that? I don't remember him used to do. No, if he gets time, he likes to. Only when he gets time. No. Oh. 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 Rolling Nick from Steve there. He'll enjoy that one. Service advantage. Cool, blimey. Oh, well played. Well played, Steve. Got a bit lucky there. He gave Rob his favourite spot and he didn't execute it. And Steve had a really, really good volley there. Oh. Five all. Final set of the day. Steve serving. Who's going to win it, Ben? Five games all. Well, Rob's got to be mad with himself. He had uh, so many chances that game uh, to, to, to get extra points. And uh, not least the main wall force he just had, but the, the winning gallery shot to win the, to win the set. 15 love Steve. The wrong side of the court, and he's 15 love down. Yeah, maybe he shouldn't have been thinking love. about day three, as you suggested, Ben. Bite me. <laughs> now then, now then, now then. Only return a serve error from Robert L. Fay. Five all. Set number eight. Chase the door. I don't think Steve will mind that at this stage. Thirty love. That's a beatable chase, certainly. And Drew seems to be chucking all the other balls into the marker's box somewhere. And the last gallery. interesting and Steve's had a number of sets in this tournament where he's been ahead and, and, and lost and you get the feeling that Steve's win this set he's stolen it
Yeah, he's, he's, he's done the opposite. And, and again, it, it's, it may be to all, it may be 5-3 down, but he will be so buoyed from being 5-3-1 down. 30 love receiver leads, chase chance the door. The anyway, he's got to still do it. He's got he's to win the points. Let's see what happens. Come at the hour, come at the play. Winning gallery on the backhand volley, 15.30. Now he's defending last gallery. 15.30, last gallery. Good serve. Great serve. All right. Yeah. Yeah, 30 all. 30 all now, Rob serving. Puts him yeah. slightly at advantage again. Time. 30 all. Again, the difference being tight railroad. <laughs> See what happens here. There's the fault. Tough to get this one to hang in. It's going for the bobble, it looks like. Oh, he's got that to stick to the wall. That's 40-30 to Steve. Set point. Chance for 3-5. Wow, and all of a sudden it's Steve who misses the one. Really? Would you step inside that, really? I mean, I know yes. you want to win the point, but that's just so tough. You've got to move so quickly for that. Come on, three. Worse than three, juice. point there but Steve, Steve's come out of nowhere and robbed the point and come out of it with a decent chase. Definitely done better than he could have done. Crazy thing about this. Both chases worse than three. Is everyone's feeling like they want to see more tennis now because of the way these two are pushing for this last, uh, this last game and it's, and it's actually just about to finish one way or another. Well, we just finish the whole thing tonight and just keep going. Drew sensing the mood. So Juice, the completion chase, the world worse than season. three. Worse than three, Chase. Boomerang serve. That's a pretty good serve at five all. Juice. For a second, Rob actually considered backhand boasting that one. Advantage, worse than three. Another time. Same chase again. He's missed it. Yeah. That was a very, very yeah. thing. Lost the, the chase. And that is set for Steve. Three sets to five. So today has ended two sets all. Yeah. Steve looking like a champion. Yeah. And he's three sets to five down. But from two sets to last early on. So oh, here comes the big man. Phillips is out there. He's going to injure him probably. That is a great result for Steve from two sets to love down there, Ben. Yep, um, although it looks like Adam won it. It's always a big boy, isn't he? He's got a bit of chutney there.
if you haven't seen all of Australian crowd can do, you have tonight. So, um, thank you all of the, everyone for coming to give this evening. All the Australians have made it uh, over. Fantastic. Um, of course, to see so many of you here. We certainly heard you. And um, I hope to make all of you will be back again on Saturday to see the final stage of the most magnificent Neptune. world. Neptune. Neptune. I'd like to take this opportunity again to thank Neptune.